Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Learn by Play here on the D&D channel. My name is Will, I'm a D&D sex icon and I'm back with a full cast and crew of Learn by Play to learn and play Dungeons and or Dragons. Uh, we've got Tool School back of us today. Uh, Tool School, how are you doing my friend? I'm doing good. I'm ready to do some uh, crazy, crazy reinventing the realms. Uh, today I will be playing our... Asimar Celestial Warlock, uh, Miguel Oltanava. And uh, he is our resident parrot rainbow boy, uh, having a good time. He had to be Mr. Beige for a little while last week. He is back and ready to go as we found out other new horrible things that are happening in our city. And we've got these 93 kids, whatever. <laughs> yeah, this is going to go great. Miguelabu for everybody. Cannot wait. Yes, Miguelabu this uh, St. Patrick's Day is uh, very, uh, it's trending. It's it's the most sold drink today, uh, I can confirm. Yes. In the realms, at least. Uh, we've also got Sid back of us today. Sid, how you doing? I'm doing great. Um, I was tired, and now, like, suddenly, I'm not. And I'm ready, and I'm excited for everything. Um, I'm going to be playing Fair and Holing. She is a half-elf fighter, uh, arcane archer, a lot of fun things happening. I'm ready to uh, save some kids. Save some kids. Yes, that's the agenda for today. Uh, we've got Greg back for us today. Greg, how you doing, my friend? I am doing well, buddy. We are here. It is St. Patty's Day. It is the D&D &D channel. We are reinventing. We are realming. We are dungeons. We are dragoning. I cannot wait <laughs> to do this. Everyone is welcome. Uh, the whole community, whether you watch or play or learn by play, you are all part of a wonderful thing that I get to be a part of, and I'm so happy. Playing Zephyr, he's a barbarian, he's an air genasi. Let's just play. Let's just sit down and play. Let's just stop. What are we doing talking? Let's just play, Why damn it. Can we play? <laughs> <laughs> why, why didn't we start 12 hours ago? Uh, great stuff. Thank you, Greg. We've also got Chelsea back with us today. Chelsea, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It is one of my absolute favorite holidays ever. For all you adorable redheaded people out there, today is your day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so drink it up. Uh, I have a little bit of Irish whiskey in my coffee. It's going to be a good game. I'm playing Rufus, uh, our human monk who is, um, you know, a little oversized. Uh, he's a big old teddy bear and he's ready to help these kids, you know, find the right path. <laughs> Great stuff. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, today we'll, I think we'll rename the series Let's Just Play. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more catchy, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, well, my friends, let's get into a little bit of what the show is about. Of course, there's an actual play show, but we bring in elements of you know, DM tips and world creation as well. This series is reinventing the realms about taking the Forgotten Realms and twisting them and turning them each episode and changing a little bit uh, things about them while helping you guys create your own homebrew worlds and, of course, enjoying the adventure that we take these guys along on the way. Today's topic, as I have my PowerPoint presentation ready for you guys in a minute, is the fun stuff. We're talking about economics today, so stay tuned for that about half... Halfway through, we're going to get into some really fun stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's actually going to be fun. Episode. It's actually <laughs> going to involve zero math, uh, which will please everyone. Is it just about the pot at the end of the rainbow? It is all about that, yeah. It's, it's Just the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? <laughs> yeah. Slide two is just all about St. Patrick's Day and leprechauns and those. Uh, <laughs> you got me there. Uh, but let's remind ourselves of what happened last time on the show, because last week, the party uh, were taking some kids uh, out from the College of Mages, uh, saving their lives as a group known as the Wardens were busting in through, destroying down the place, uh, and with the help of the Master of Illusions uh, teacher at this college, Draven, they managed to escape with no less than 93 children, uh, and uh, after a comedy of errors uh, involving a play, a beige man, and... Uh, a strange amount of pirates, uh, the party managed to get these kids aboard Zephyr's boat to safety. But uh, they had to, of course, <laughs> of course there's far more shenanigans along the way. I recommend you go watch on YouTube if you haven't seen already. Uh, as uh, Miguel almost got himself killed, Farron ended up actually shooting him in the back. Uh, but that's all in the past now. Uh, <laughs> between friends, it's St. Patrick's Day. Uh, they managed to get the kids to safety, 
But now they are faced with the task of getting them back into the College of Mages because at around 7, 8, 9 p.m. tonight, uh, the spell, which takes 24 hours to cast by High Mages Merelda, is going to be completed, in theory, at the College of Mages, which will get all of these children to a safe, uh, different dimension, or a uh, pocket dimension, known as Avalon, which is a secret place for mages to hide out away from the eyes of the Wardens who look to be hunting them down, arresting them, and maybe doing worse things to them. Who knows? Uh, so, they got to get these kids back in today from the port town, and they just got some bad, bad news from their good companion, Mutt, uh, who told them, as he was at the College of Mages when this explosion went off last time, that there were undead burrowing through and coming up through these tunnels that they they weren't expecting any undead they were actually expecting their good friend well their companion uh fidget the gnome to be coming instead of hordes of undead with creepy snake things on their arms so we'll get into that today i say we just dive straight into things and we pick up from where we left off we're in a tavern uh we're at mutt's tavern and uh you guys have just been taking him upstairs to help mutt out and heal him uh we're gonna glaze over the actual healing process is much feeling a lot better. It's probably been like an hour or so since we actually last um, uh, saw you guys. Uh, but Mutt is feeling better. He's certainly been in the wars the past few days. He's been attacked by uh, strange spider sewage creatures and, of course, uh, nearly exploded and attacked by undead things as well. But he's big, burly half orc. He puts Latenda in bartender, and he's sitting on a, uh, a bed in front of you guys at the moment with bandages all over him as several different, you know, healers uh, tend to his wounds. He's just told you about this undead threat that you saw coming up through the tunnels. So, there was that, but I uh, feel a lot better now, thanks. My friend, you say undead, as in... Like zombies, or skeletons, or just these... Well, I've always wondered world. about that, because they do look like they is dead. And at the same time, everyone calls them undead, as though they were alive. But then I thought undead means alive. But then I thought maybe undead is like Uncle Dad, Uncle Dead. So, yeah. They were like, they look like zombies to me, is what I'm saying. He's taking a bit of a concussion to the head. He's... <laughs> <laughs> They have, um, the snakes on their arms. These zombies. Oh, yes, they did have those snake things on their arm. So, the red arrows. That is not good news. Well, I thought that as they were attacking me and cutting me apart. I thought, this is bad news. Um, I'm uh, mistaken, or was the last time we killed one of these red arrows, he was not undead. No, they were alive. It was very much an alive kitty cat. Yes, it yes, it was a uh, tabaxi from uh, who, who had infiltrated uh, into the police force. This is well. It well, seems like things are taking a turn for the worse. <laughs> <laughs> you, my friend, are a. <laughs> Mutt looks to the camera. <laughs> 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 Like I say, I feel a lot better now, thanks. Anything else I can help you with? You want a drink or so? And he like stand, he gets to his feet and he like sways, looks very woozy. I can just um, go down to the bar, you know. No, you just sit down. Sit down. Uh, uh, Zephyr kind of pitches over the bar and starts, you know, filling up ale and things like that and washing the glasses and just taking over tending. Though he's not nearly as tender as but <laughs> yes, you you rest this evening, our friend. Um, <laughs> we uh, actually, we probably all are getting in need of a rest. Yes, it's true. I'm There's tired. not much more damage we can do this evening. <laughs> nope, and I'm still riding on about nine hit points. So um... perhaps we all should gather our thoughts and take a rest, and then uh, figure out tomorrow for. Well, it seemed like a wonderful plan at the time to leave uh, High Mistress Esmeralda at the College of Mages. We now have 93 children who we just barely snuck out so that we now need to snuck, sneak back in. Snuck back in? Sneaked? It's a snuck. Right. It is a, I can't it. It's a snuck. To snuck? Yes. To snuck. I hope we can keep them. 93? Every single one of them is so cute. 
It's true. They, they are cute. There were a couple who had a very good arm. They might be helpful. <laughs> we can't ask these children to fight no more. It's our jobs to get them in and out. I'm afraid I, back I, I, I'm not looking... I can't say I'm looking for work. I am looking for a stable hand. Uh, not not one that works at the stables, but I mean someone with non-shaky kind of hands. Uh, because a lot of the work here requires a stiff, you know, got a good grip on it. Because if you've got a shaky hand, it'll spill the drinks. I'm looking for one, you know, if anyone's looking for employment, I'm happy to help. But I can't say I've got the infrastructure here to employ 93 kids. Nor indeed the licence. Can't we just leave them on the boat? No. It's Why that, not? That might be what people do with children. That's what I would do if I had children. We have to, we have to feed and water them. We could make it into a tavern boat. A travelling tavern? None of this is happening. On the sea? Wait a second. Wait a second. It's <laughs> <laughs> the first boat. You, you are speaking my language. So you're saying that instead of doing an entire campaign in this city where we need to deal with these with all of these people that our good friend here has uh, informed us of, that we could all just get on a boat and open a tavern and uh, with 93 children <laughs> I, I, that, that is exactly what i'm suggesting we go away <laughs> from all of the, the drama and just you know stay away somewhere sail away sail away sail away it can be like a, yeah. a cruise and me and rufus can keep doing our routine every night <laughs> we could have ports of call and we could call it beaches <laughs> it would be like a carnival at sea <laughs> <laughs> So, Will, Will's going to change the name of the episode. Instead, we're talking about economy when you revolt against your campaign and just take a boat to the pirate islands. Oh my god. I love all of this. Let me just, let me just quickly edit all of this. <laughs> and you just tra- start dragging files to the trash can. Um, Hello, delete button, my old friend. <laughs> Oh, there you go, yeah. Uh, Zephyr's behind the bar. Making another one. (laughs) Thank you. The only problem with this is that I do have a lot of financial and familial obligations to this place. And also, I do question the legality of taking 93 kids away on a boat. I think there might be some raised flags there, and I, I don't mean the pirate kinds. Right. So, oh, yeah. we, but we saved them. So it's but we're not probably... done saving them yet. They're not. Well, you know, they're not that in the. Is my intents of the law, um, but <laughs> perhaps we should return them as we told Esmeralda we would do so. No, but there's no portal to stick them in. Yeah, we have to check and see if Esmeralda is still alive. If she's That's still alive, if then we can I'm... take them in. We can get them in. If we got them out, we can get we, them in. We could... That well, not if there's undead in the tunnels. How we got we go walk up the front door and knock? As a rule of thumb, that is not always true, but usually. <laughs> well, listen, look around town. Are there people screaming, running from undead? That means they've got them. If there are undead there, they're either gone or they're penned up. These wardens, they're not going to let allow undead to run around. We and use them against one another. True. We do know that the wardens uh, of anyone were fought against the undead. In fact, everyone has been lauding what a wonderful job they did while the undead were breaking out of all everywhere. Huh. Well, the real question is, if the wardens didn't bring the undead as part of their quelling of the college, who did? I am... Worried it might have been our buddy Fidget the Gnome. As he does, he's not, I don't trust him no more. I have the same concern. He does make me sell drugs. He makes you? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm happy to oblige. <laughs> you mean he just sells you your drugs? No, I mean, I, I, am a, <laughs> I am a seller because of him. But he just asked me very nicely, and you know me, I can't say no, can I? I guess not. It has led to a lot of addicts hanging around here, though. I bet. Well, well, first off, we can't have kids in the basement if there's addicts hanging around this here tavern. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to put my big old 
barefoot down on that. I can't. But well, I think it might I be say, educational for the kids to get to know Annix because they might be them later on in life. I feel like that's a miss. No, that's not how that works. Hmm. Uh, I would rather we leave them on the boat. Well, I think we leave them on the boat at least for the next 24 hours, but... And we go check to make sure the portal's ready. Yes, and we also need to make sure that they we have a way to get them through the streets and back to the Mage College. And even if the wardens are no longer actively inside of it, very likely they are guarding it to make sure no one returns. There are many so artifacts, I assume, in there. We're completely done with this whole masquerade party plan, right? I feel like that didn't even happen. Me too. It, 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 it's, Did Fidget even it's have a party? Happened. I don't know. You never went. Could, <laughs> we never went down. Down. <laughs> Real, could we find out if we that's... We just forced him to have tonight. some party. <laughs> oh, did they just throw a party and no one showed up? That was your <laughs> <zero party. laughs> It uh, was all of Will. Oops. Is there a way for us to find out if the party actually went on? If there were invitations sent out? Well, Probably. isn't it still like that night? Like if it's it still the same home, night. I mean, it would still be happening. It, it would have happened, you know, it would have started earlier. So if you were to go there and turn up now, you'd be turning up very late. Uh, oh, fashionably late. It would still be probably going, you know. Why don't we scope it on the way? We can see if the party's still going on. We can uh, track maybe a good route for moving the kids towards the castle or whatever this place is, the stronghold, um, and then we can get in. I just don't think we can sneak in via the tunnels no more with the undeads. Miguel pokes uh, Rufus in the hole in his side. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we should rest before we go venturing out into the streets. Uh, um, yeah. I am tapped and do not... Uh, <laughs> I we, guess it's true. My yeah, hole needs to heal so you can't poke it no more. <laughs> well, how's everybody feeling? Yeah, Farron like looks over at uh, Miguel and it's like, I'm I'm really sorry that I uh, shot you in the back there. I, I thought <laughs> I thought that you were my clone and and you were trying to kill me and take over my entire life and um just a lot of paranoid thoughts. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to if I'd known it was you, I would never have done that, but I could just got because oh, so fast. Here. I usually have to pay extra for that. Anyway, uh, perhaps we should get some rest. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Take your rooms if here. Some... I've still got them clean. If some uh, of us are all right, we could go and check and just see if the party's going on. That rules out Fidget one way or the other. If the party's going on, Fidget might still be an asset. If there is no party, there never was one. Fidget definitely has something against us or he's dead whatever well, we, either way if we think that is important i can patch up our friend rufus here for just a moment uh to get us through the night but we will definitely need to rest afterwards well i'm fine now well, i'm good i just want to go I, I was about to say i'm technically at nine airports i'm not gonna <laughs> lie i might be a big fella but um, i'm hurting pretty bad so i will use my last spell slot <laughs> Let's hope we don't get in no we trouble. Oh, Ooh, look at that! Oh. Eight, eight hit points. Hey. Okay, well that moves me up to seventeen. All right, oh, uh, <laughs> all right, all right. All right. I'm, I'm kicking. Let's go. We get trouble. <laughs> oh. Let's go to a party. I'm. <laughs> 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 it's St. Patty's Day, right? <laughs> like, this Bring is out the green beer. <laughs> this is how you are in real life. Like something absolutely terrible happens. You like break your leg, and you're like, "Oh my God, let's just go. <laughs> let's just move it fine. We're gonna make it be great." Okay, so you guys want to head out and go to uh, Fidget's place and see if there's a party on? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. This is a wonderful one. The idea. night's still young. I, I was about to say, I don't even know if we've submitted the door. I think we. I had to stand outside last time. <laughs> yeah, you guys have... I, I don't want to mess up our doors, uh, our plans now. We might as well just keep them terrible. So let's just go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 like, like two whole weeks of completely forgetting this party plan. And then it's like, oh, wait. <laughs> we should do that. We should have done that. <laughs> we should have done that. Let's go do it now. Even though, yeah, okay. All right, so you yeah. guys are headed off. Um, I press to digitate everyone nice and clean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, you head through the, the city, and it's not long as you head over to that side of town uh, that you hear the kind of the heavy drum and bass sounds uh, of a gnomish house party. 
Uh, and Ooh, I wonder if DJ Phylactery is playing. The heavy, I love that guy. The heavy thump. Uh, and indeed, it turns out that DJ Phylactery is in the house. Uh, as you walk by, many people are many people are walking through. Uh, you see people are coming out of the party, and it, the party is kind of broken out into the street as well. People are outside, you know, smoking and and drinking outside, and they're all wearing these masquerade masks, uh, like you guys, uh, you know, wanted them to. So, for the sake of argument, you guys have your masquerade mask on you because you did go and buy them. You did get your outfit, so you presumably got them in your backpack and changed them on the way if you so decide. Um, but you know, there's clearly a party going on here in this gnomish mansion. There's no party like a gnome party, they say. Really? Okay. It sounds, um, noisy. They're just making a lot of noise. Well, yes, that is the whole fun of is it. That, so how can, are you, par- are you So party? you can bump and grind. I'm sorry, say who what? You, there's bumping and grinding? I sort of bump up against next to Rufus. <laughs> I guess I sort of bump up next to Rufus and just kind of watches the ripples travel around and back. Now that is a party trick, my friend. <laughs> I feel like if I try that, I'm going to smash somebody. I don't think I could... I just just remember scratching out a gnome. My friend, I need to introduce you to the mosh pit. Come! (laughs) (laughs) I grab Rufus by the arm and try to take him inside, then realize he won't fit through I was about to say, I don't think I'll fit. I think I'm going to stand outside and keep watch. Rufus, do, do you really want me to stand out here with you? Because it might get cold and you might get nervous. Um, no, I'll just, you know, I'll just look in the window. Everybody, if something goes wrong, I don't know. What's the signal? I just have this oh. feeling. <laughs> I'm like, Rufus, like, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> I wish I was in there with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love the canon. It's canon that Rufus gets nervous when he gets cold now. <laughs> I have a very question. <laughs> Greg has a real question. Oh, a real question. We don't have any oh, other here, Greg. <laughs> it, it, oh, wait. Greg wants to play D&D. Hold oh, on. Okay. Go ahead. No, this is a very serious question. Is Krabby Abby still alive? Oh, yeah. Our horses horse. were tied up outside. Your horses were tied up outside when you saw them. Uh... Last, they're which tripping was balls, the, man. Today, the... <laughs> Someone fed the horses. <laughs> the red Kool-Aid. The, the... Wait, wait, D and D. Greg wants to play D and D. Stand by. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry, Greg. Uh, yeah. The um, the horses aren't outside where you left them, and the pony isn't out there either. No, you don't. There's no sign of them outside. Where's sunshine? They took my pony. <laughs> The saddest thing I've ever heard. Hey, I'm sad about it. Rufus, I'll stay out here with you if you want. I, um, oh, Zephyr, then you're with me. Okay. Do we really want to go in here, though? Do we need we to did, go in? We didn't show up. He's having a party for... It's and we party. asked him to do, and we're not bringing refugees here, which is okay. what we said we were going to do. Well, if we go check and see if the portal is there, then we might be able to bring refugees here and they can stay here. Uh, I like that. I like that idea much better. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, this is this is a lot closer to the College of Mages than Mutt's Place or the boat. Like, this is the closest location. Mm-hmm. Well, that's oh. what I was thinking. Maybe our master thief friend has... Oh, wait, never mind. It's across the street into the sewers. Never mind. We do have sewer access to here. So we don't have to take the kids through the street. We can bring them from the port to here. Wait, but there's got there's undeads in the tunnels. There's yeah. undead in the castle. I Actually, th- see what we were saying. Listen, listen, listen. Uh, what we were saying was that we could go get them from the boat, and they have these the stuff on their face, the the prestidude the prestidude oh. just, masks on right. their face and then we bring them and act like they're going to the party like our original <coughs> plan and then we bring them here if we find out that the portal is there so we go check for the portal uh, honestly maybe we don't even do that maybe we just go get them and we wing it no no <laughs> i don't right. think the waiting no winging the first part i liked oh okay <laughs> that's, that's the last part it sucks uh never mind. Actually- Moving, moving the kids with the mask on is not as a bad plan. If anybody stops us, we say we're headed to this here party. Well, but we we're have gonna to make have sure to get the. Correct, correct. You yes, we got to go now to check on the pool. 
but, but we're yeah, going to have to get them there anyway at some point, and now's the perfect time. At least they'll be a lot closer to the college and not at the boat. Hey, Will, how long's it been since we left? I mean, are we talking that it's only a couple hours <laughs> since this whole thing went down and we're, like, returning to the scene of the crime? Yeah, uh, it's probably been oh, three, four hours. I love hours. this idea, then. Because <laughs> that never goes how many? Well. How many hours, Will? Three, four hours. I saw we let them party. Just let them, let them drink and drug themselves. Um, plus, I'm afraid I'm going to hurt the gnome if I find out he sold my pony. So I say we keep moving. Uh, we go up to this here castle. We see how it's doing. Uh, they're never going to expect we'd come back three hours later. It's actually a good plan. Thank you. All right, so you guys want to go through the sewers, go back in the College of Mages, see what's going on with the ball, first of all. Yes. Cool. Oh, okay, let's go. Let's do just that. So, uh, who is leading you guys through the sewers? Because the sewer entrance is just opposite the street. Pretty easy to get into. Rude. Is that is that a survival? I feel like I let us through the the sewers. Is, uh, survival, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oops, I didn't mean. I rolled the first time. Sorry, I hit it twice. Twenty one. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> take, uh, take, take the first one. Take the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. Uh, yeah, you head down into the sewers once again, uh, Rufus and. Uh, you're familiar with the way to go now because it has been uh, like you've gone down there once, you've come back again, so you recognise the several of the turds along the way uh, that you that you've you've pictured before in order to you know to keep you to keep you going the straight way. Um, everyone can roll me a perception check down here as you guys are going single file once again down through the sewers. I see the poo and that's it. That's all you need. That's that's how you, that's, <laughs> those are your landmarks and how to get the places. Remember, so we we've established the tapered end is north. <laughs> <laughs> it is canon. Yep. As they uh, say. So yeah, Miguel, uh, Miguel, you as you're down here, uh, you notice there's this patch of uh, sticky black stuff, gook, gunk on the the wall uh it's it's more you know it's probably about as large as like your head uh so there's quite a lot of it on there uh it looks like someone's kind of like thrown up some some black gunk uh it looks sticky and almost tar like and it's unlike anything you've seen down here and you're pretty sure it wasn't there the time before uh that is some gross looking stuff right there do you remember seeing this stuff everybody um, nope. I remember some spiders, um, and some general wafting of feces, but definitely no black gunk. Ooh. Can we, no can gunk. we, like, roll, like, investigation or something to see if we can tell what this is? Yeah, yeah and then sign me, on uh, it. an investigation check on this, yeah. Oh, I'm not, I'm not good at that, but I'll, I'm gonna try. Uh, None me of too. us are good at it. Nope. I was about to say oh, insight. I got the zero. Oh, would have been better with a insight, probably. Yeah. Um. How does this? How's the zero? Uh, <laughs> and that one turned you, into a zero. You have literally no idea. <laughs> I'm the one who's like, is. eat it. I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> don't, don't put it in your mouth. Could be some like you know honey that's gone weird or something. Or... <laughs> that oh. really good. So I don't. I don't remember it. Maybe, don't, whatever you do, don't touch it. I feel... Yeah, you know, Farron, like, has her hand almost no. on it, and you're like... Oh, yeah, smack her oh, finger, like, don't, sorry. don't, don't touch that. <laughs> it just looks so squishy. It, mmm. Uh, perhaps we should leave it alone, if I recall. Last time we messed with things that we didn't understand, uh, black snakes uh, attacked us and almost ate through our friend Zephyr's chest. Does it have a source, Will? Does it look like it's coming from somewhere? It looks like it might be coming through the wall rather than being vomited onto it or like placed on it. It looks like uh, it might have been coming out of the wall now. Is there a crack or something? Or just like the general I mean, like mortar? It, you would presume that there is a crack, but it's covered by the black tar. So it mm. looks like it's kind of like pouring out of it now. It's It's coming from the wall. Can I check for a secret door, Will? Sure, you or can somebody a, uh, investigation checks? Yeah, Farron and Rufus can't really see anything on this, but Zephyr and Miguel <clears throat> haven't checked this. Nice. Out. Oh, okay. Oh. Sixteen. Yes. I'll take a look now that everyone's pointing at it. Ooh, oh. double nat twenties. Damn. 
Uh, it double. is meant to be! It was, yeah. Uh, very nice. Yeah, you um, take a look at it, Zephyr, and uh, you're kind of like prodding out this thing maybe like a stick or, you know, it's a piece of wood or something like that that you could try and like part some of it to see beyond. Uh, and uh, Miguel just comes in and, I don't know, Miguel, you can describe how you do this, but you're going to find a way to like move this tar across. Uh, maybe with magic or something else. Uh, well, yeah. Uh... I am going, yeah, I press the digitation will work for that, won't it? Uh, so I, yeah, I sort of go up there and you sort of see a, this rainbow energy sort of come out of my hand and I sort of just, it's almost like a little broom that just kind of like a little rainbow shaped, colored broom that just and sort of brushes it to the side. Yeah, yeah maybe you can see better now what's going on here. There is a, uh, a dark corridor of what looks like black marble, which has been uh, like, Furrowed through the earth here. It looks like very man made, first of all. It's like clean walls. Uh, it doesn't look like it's been like dug out recently. It looks like it might have been here for a very long time. Uh, and there is more of this kind of sticky black tar on the ceiling and around it, but it, it looks reversible. Now, this is interesting. Was that there the last time we came down here? I don't remember this tunnel. Um, remember, they said the undead came from the ground. Uh, Zephyr, you could roll me a history check on this one. History. Mystery. Nice. You've Again. Of, you've heard of, like, smuggler tunnels, which, you know, this could be something uh, uh, alike, uh, in which case it probably leads out of the city. You are on the kind of edges of the city right now, so it's possible that this thing... You know, you've got a, a good sense of where you guys are located, thanks to Rufus, and you're pretty sure that this tunnel would lead out of the city. Where like out to... of the city or the docks? Uh, out of the city into like the mainland, yeah. You know. Now that. Oh, now that's a new discovery that could change the plan. We could no. move them round instead of moving them through the city. We can move them through the outskirts of the city, through this tunnel to here, and up through to the castle. Yes, the only, I, what I'm concerned of, I wonder if. At the other end of this is where the undead came from. Oh. That they came Well, can I check? Go ahead. Can we check the traps? Or traps, tracks, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, you guys can run me uh, survival checks here. If you have proficiency in it, you can check. Hit, hit. I'll stick 17. With yeah. Two. There are, there are definitely uh, <clears throat> bookmarks in the kind of. The under sewage, uh, which forms like a you know a greasy layer everywhere when you walk down here. Uh, it looks like a lot of people have have been down here, but it doesn't necessarily just look like footprints. Uh, for the most part, you see um, clawed or webbed feet uh, that have moved down here, and you also see that they have moved not only uh, on the floor, but it looks like they have crawled across the wall uh, as well and moved down the wall like a monkey could could go down a go down a wall. Uh, and you also spot one slender set of footprints that you would suspect to be a uh, a female print, not a large, heavy male boot. Have, heading into the tunnel or coming from the tunnel? Coming from the tunnel this way, mm. towards you guys. And into the sewer. And presumably into the, into the okay. sewer and the College of Mages. Yeah. Wow, that's not good. What is this? Web, these are webbed. I know. Uh, do I know a creature with webbed feet? You can roll me a nature check here, Rufus. See if you've ever seen anything like this or heard anything like this. I know nothing today. Um, you know, like you've heard from uh, having watched Grung the musical that, uh, that <laughs> Grung have webbed feet, but yeah, this is nothing like that. And there's this tiny footprint, and it's lighter footprint here, led by a woman. Well, yeah, it looks like that is a uh, that is a Gucci size seven. It's uh, <laughs> very elegant, uh, very elegant shoe. I don't know of this Gucci you speak of, but um, I'm a little nervous that when we're going to get up here to this castle, there's going to be more than just the wardens to worry about. Uh, but we need to know what we're facing before we bring children back, and we also need to see if Esmeralda has survived. And if Esmeralda is there, then I'm sure we're actually going to be fine. Because if she's not dead, then we probably won't die. Roy, I've died in the last 
I don't know, 72 hours, about three times. So that's what's a day for three days. I, uh, my look, uh, it doesn't feel like, um, I die a lot is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so I think uh, we should uh, be, you know, just wary of just waltzing in, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You're done falling down, big man. <laughs> I've got a feeling it's all behind you. <laughs> well, I think we should try to go as quietly as possible if we are going to go forward and see what might lie ahead. Um, we are going to Mutt's Hole, correct? That is where this yep. path oh. comes out. So at least we know we'll, we'll be entering into not a main part of the college. Yeah, it's Snape's, not Snape, Draven's. Uh, <laughs> exit went out of the main tower that's right yeah it seems like there are you know you guys know that there are a few tunnels around here but you guys are the ones that know about mud's hole so uh <laughs> it's possible yeah. that if you were to you know you know that you're only going to pop up in a room you're not going to pop up in the middle of a courtyard and there's going to be undead right. everywhere okay okay so yeah right okay. i think the only way fo is forward yes i we could don't that's all we can do is keep going we don't have enough information Okay. Uh, you guys want to run me stealth checks? We're heading down here stealthily. Yes. Fifteen. Thirteen, 13 for Miguel. 13. Oh, you all rolled a thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's not unlucky at all. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> oh, not yeah. on St. Patty. Yeah, this. Not on St. Patty. So. Oh, it's weird. I hear myself twice. Uh, okay, so the uh, group of you uh, head down here. You're pretty quiet. You head past the crack in the ceiling from which you saw these sewage spiders jumping out from before. Um, this now is covered in a thick wad of black tar. It looks as though that kind of entrance has been sealed up by this, uh, like almost like mucus tar. Oh. Oh. Well, this is a little bit inconvenient. Uh, you can totally go past it. I mean, it's just covering up the ceiling from where you were before, but it definitely wasn't there when you left it. Someone that... is making sure that they can get in and get out without any the trouble. Ceiling. Yeah, the ceiling it behind them. Oh, or they're leaving themselves directions. Oh, like breadcrumbs? Yeah. A disgusting, black, slimy black. <laughs> is it flammable? The time now! Do we really want to find out? <laughs> you don't tweet nice, do I don't ask a question if I don't mean it. I mean, I only ask because it could be beneficial knowledge for the future. Um, how yeah. much is there, Will? How much is there? <laughs> I'm not going to like light the tunnel on fire. Was, I'm not that dramatic today. I want the, the, the flash cut back to when Will said, this is a quite explosive environment. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of it. Um, you know, it looks like enough for you know. I mean, it's covering like a big hole in the ceiling. So imagine okay. if you had like a you know a crack in your roof, like all the plaster that you need to to cover over that. It's uh, you know, it's it's quite a lot of it. Perhaps we find out only in case of emergency. Um, the and it's covering the hole we need to go through, no, or no, just the one covering, where the spiders were. Covering the ceiling above is not at all impeding your progress. Okay, it's okay, just, okay. There was a big crack in the ceiling before from which the spiders came out from a couple of episodes ago. Uh huh. And now the uh -huh. second time you're down here, it's been covered up by something. Yeah, that's where we found the nest and we burned it. Okay, okay, I, I'm with you now. Okay. Um. Well. Um, we know there's no more spiders coming out of it, um, and it doesn't seem to want to hurt us, so I just hope we keep moving. I believe that's probably the best course of action. Uh, yeah. We just see what these uh, sea monkeys are, have gone and done, and how, if they are undead, or is this a whole... Do we have, like, five people all assaulting the castle on the same night? It seems like there was a bigger party here than there was down at the... The gnome's place. It's because it, the party follows us. Don't you know? <laughs> we are the party. What <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys are moving on past us. Don't want to investigate any further. Um. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't, yeah. All right. Keep moving. Uh, from uh, 
ahead as you head past this as there's a, you know, about to be a turn before you get to Mutt's Hole. Uh, you hear the sounds of uh, uh, blades, uh, or blade being drawn, uh, and what sounds like a fairly desperate battle going on, uh, you know, maybe like a hundred feet ahead of you and to the left through the darkness, um, and you can hear the sounds of who you think to be a man uh, fighting, and the sounds of what seem to be uh, other creatures uh, fighting him. Um, as you hear the kind of <laughs> uh, and uh, then you kind of go, uh, so you're getting a, a fair amount of, of battle sounds coming up. It seems like a small skirmish, doesn't seem like a big fight is going on. Um, I, I guess you'd say, uh, you know, one human combatant and some other things. That's not good. Well, we need to just go see what is happening and lend a hand to whichever side we think is the right hand to lend a hand to, because um, that is the way we must go. True. We should do it sneaky, though. We should I agree. Sh sh you guys want to roll stealth checks for me as you sneak up on this battle? Oh, oh no. <clears throat> 20. Dirty. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a group stealth check, so we're going to take uh, all the rolls into account. So we've got a lot of good rolls, actually, and just Miguel, who's a little bit noisy, you head down here. Uh, so, you come down the 100 feet or so, uh, and um, look to the left, and through the darkness, you can see um, who you think to be one of the wardens. Uh, he's wearing this big kind of plate armor, once again. Uh, which you can recognize to be the same ones that you were fighting earlier before. Um, and uh, he is fighting desperately uh, with a long sword, and you can see he's got this like huge tear in his arm um, as these three small but nimble, they are monkey-like creatures. Um, they, they, they launch themselves all over him. One's on it, his back right now. Uh, they have uh, strange ape-like kind of teeth, but they are sharp, serrated. Um, and far, uh, you know, deadlier than any kind of monkey that you've seen before. They also have no hair or fur on them. Uh, they appear to be, um, uh, you know, have like skin on them, um, but much of their skin seems to have decayed away. And I guess you'd say these things are undead, uh, but they are far quicker than any, you know, zombies that you might have heard of before um, from having, you know, from been in the war, any... Uh, it's not a mindless creature. It seems to be the three of them jumping upon him. Uh, um, almost like I'm picturing a um, specific reference here. From the mummy, too, there are these pygmy creatures. Uh, mm -hmm. And they like, yeah, 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 jump yeah, yeah. really fast over him. That's the that's image you can have in mind if you're familiar with that film. Uh, and they're just kind of, like, tearing into him. And you know, one's like getting into his neck, and it's going... Kind of, and there's a little chorus of chittering as he's trying to batter away these three creatures with one on his back. and. You can tell that he's definitely losing this fight. Uh, oh, we gotta help! I'm gonna go help, help him. I, I, yeah, can't I, uh, I like to throw one of my magic stones at it because I'm thinking that a magic the stone just looks like a stone, and maybe I won't get caught for using magic. Sure. Uh, let's throw some initiative here. Okay, cool. These were the guys we were fighting. Uh, not very good. Yeah, you were definitely fighting this guy, but like, you know, a couple of hours. Okay, hey, this could turn. The tables. I'm not. I'm not feeling it. Apparently, me oh, either. <laughs> You're like, eh, I'll get a vote later. I don't know. I don't really want to right now. <laughs> I just wanted to go to a party, and now one guy who, <laughs> one guy who <laughs> questioned it. The one guy who questioned it's the guy who rolled the highest uh, initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, let's see here. Got a one on a fourteen, and these things going on eleven. All right. Uh, let's rename that. So it looks like we've got uh, Zephyr going first. Uh, so we've got Zephyr first, followed by the Warden on a 14, followed by Miguel on a 12, then the Zombie Monkeys, then Rufus, and last but not least, Ferrin. Hey. Hey. <laughs> okay, so as soon as it seems that, once again, uh, violence is imminent, uh, he'll look around and for a moment question who they're supposed to be helping but then he will undo his rig pull out the shield and the uh war hammer and charge in and hopefully smack the closest zombie monkey 
And I am going to do reckless attack, but I am not raging. Cajun. Cajun. 17. 17 is a, uh, a hit against these things, yep. And six bludgeoning damage, please. Very nice. It's uh, kind of like small and uh, brittle form uh, is uh, smashed apart by uh, by Zephyr. The creature isn't dead. You hear it kind of go, and just like you know, almost like yelling at you like a like a monkey would, uh, as its like skull is like partially brained. Uh, however, despite the fact that his skull is like collapsed, uh, this thing is still moving. Uh, real fast, dodging around. E. Gross. Yeah. Uh, they nimble. <laughs> uh, the warden is going to try and attack one of them as well. He's going for a different one. Uh, manages to to get in there with his longsword as well. You can tell that he's on his last legs here. Uh, but he does manage to get in a very punishing hit against one of these creatures. Uh, taking it to near death with his longsword and a, wow. a sharp uh, kind of backstroke and uh, the, the creature's one of its arms is just lo- lopped off and falls into the stinking sewage uh, <laughs> Miguel is the one uh, that uh, Zephyr hit prone I'm asking for whether I have disadvantage with a ranged attack that's where I'm going on this sorry are any of them prone yeah, I, we, well, I was going to go with the one that Zephyr hit to try to finish it off, but if it's prone, I'll go for the one that the Warden hit. Uh, none of them are currently prone, no. Okay, I will go uh, for whichever one of those two looks worse, the Warden one or the Zephyr one. Okay, it's the Warden one. Uh, so yeah, I'll shoot it with uh, my light crossbow. Ooh, on an eight. I Never never mind. Never mind. Uh, it goes into the, you know, into the hot sewage and just goes into there. Uh, the creature kind of like does a backflip away from it. These things are really, really agile. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wherever they are, there's more to come. Uh, that's if we learned anything. That's we learned that in uh, Chult. These things do look a little reminiscent of some of the uh, the animals that you've you've seen in Chult, yeah. and so the cleanup crew. Yeah, when you were a part of the cleanup crew after the the, the season one crew had the. <laughs> <laughs> had gotten rid of most of it. There was there was still a lot of stuff going on because they spent a lot of time just doing musicals, uh, and so uh, you had to uh, to get mm. stuck in. Uh, it is the turn for the zombie monkeys, who I've affectionately uh, shortened to zonkeys. Uh, <laughs> so uh, they're going to uh, try and tear into this warden guy once again. Uh, they have multi attack, multi attack. Uh, Come on, number twelve or twenty two is going to get into him. Whoa! Uh, and they're going to start tearing him apart. He has to roll a constitution saving throw, uh, which he passes. Uh, so he it's not going to take that. Uh, but you see this, what, what essentially happens is the, the zombie monkey's tail like embeds itself into his neck uh, and you start seeing like a dark magic pulsing through his through the tail and into his neck and start like pumping in there uh, and he just like holds onto it and like pulls it out from his neck uh, which you know, leaves behind this like gaping saw uh, that is the first one all three of them are on this guy they are dead set to eat him alive Jesus 22 and a 19 they both hits oh uh, no GB GB don't eat him oh my god uh, meaning he is going to take what they do before free yeah uh, so he's taken a total of 17 damage from these creatures. He already looks fairly wounded, by the way. Um, and he is close to death as uh, this other one just like jabs its tail into his neck, almost like a scorpion's pincer. Uh, 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 stinger, rather. Uh, and just uh, like latches into his neck, anywhere on his body that they can like suck onto and, uh, and, and pierce into there and start pumping that kind of black fluid into him. Uh, the last one. Because they have multi attack, I haven't used twice. 17 and 12. Uh, one's gonna get him. Let me check his AC actually. I'm pretty sure. That'll do it. Uh, and another 7. He is on. <laughs> Woo! Not very much HP. It is Rufus's turn. He's like, he's like on his knees at this point. It's bad. Okay, Rufus is going to step up and is going to 
first off, he's going to say, hey, monkey, he's leave him alone. Um, and then he's going to make uh, his usual two attacks. So first with his core staff and then unarmed. But he's actually going to use his first key point as well to do flurry of blows. Nice. So here we go. Core staff. Or 20. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. Boom, six bludgeoning on that with his first unarmed strike to the 16. Uh, that will kill the one that was uh, on the, the the warden hit last turn. Oh, nice. Okay, so six bludgeoning for that guy. I guess since they're all on top of it, I just pick another one yeah. for the first unarmed oh, strike. Nice. Seven for the first unarmed strike. Uh, s- yep, 16, 16 is a hit. Uh, seven damage cool. will take out the other one, which has been previously <clears throat> wounded. Cool. I'm guessing 10 does not hit. 10 is not a hit. Okay, and then um, 18. Uh, 18 right, so. is a hit, yeah. All right, cool. And then another six bludgeoning damage to uh, the second one. Nice. Just punching little monkeys. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Punch the monkey. <laughs> yeah, it's like whack a mole for Rufus. Yeah. Right there, little monkeys Just like there. big fists on their heads. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the uh, the creatures seem like uh, a little resistant to your bludgeoning, uh, mm. where normally you would crush, uh, you know, a normal monkey skull, and you've practiced this before. <laughs> uh, where normally you would just crush a, uh, you know, crush a skull with your brute strength. The skull seems to like be resistant to it and or not care. Uh, ah. If you like smash in its brain, it kind of like still goes. You do manage to take out one of them and get a, a nice hit on the second one though, or the Great. last okay. one which is uh, actually still alive. Uh, the, the warden is kind of just going, help me! Ah! As his things, like, w- they may be dead, uh, the ones that you got, but their, their tails are still, like, sticking into his neck, and they are, like, hanging limp, dead off from him. So he's, like, carrying all of their weight oh my on God. his neck, and he's, like, pulling him down. He's like, oh! Uh, I'm... Yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I help pluck one from his neck on my movement action? I don't know if that's possible. It's gonna be an action to take them Oh, off. it'll be a full uh, action. Okay, yeah, never mind. to, to de... Uh, Monkey, monkey him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do monkey him. Uh, Farron, it's your turn. There's one of these creatures left. It kind of looks at you with an evil kind of... Okay. Um, okay. So from... Oh, gross. Um, from where I'm standing, I'm going to I'm gonna fire my long boat, first of all. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to see what happens then. And then I might do something else. Do it. Oh, it's a nine. A nine is not enough. These things are fast as lightning, uh, and they know kung fu fine. Yeah, they uh, it just kind of like uh, backflips away yeah. from it and like latches itself onto the wall. Okay, then um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and use my action surge then and and try yeah. again. Yeah. Twenty six. Oh, nice. Yeah, you lead the shot and see where it's about to jump to as you you get. Yeah, there, there we go. Much better. Uh, seven, seven damage. Seven is enough. Perfect. Oh wait, no, one off. It's almost there. Um, you like stick its tail through, uh, with the arrow through into the wall, and it's like hanging up there right now. Like, ah, trying to get it's away. It's St. Patrick's Day, and you won't let me have this. I'm <laughs> it ain't quite dead yet. I want to see if I can get this warden. Uh, Zephyr, it is your turn. Okay, so uh, uh, Zephyr, emboldened by the murder most foul that his party has laid on to these creatures, he will uh, come forward and try to smack this thing. Uh, reckless attack. See if he can. No. He no, he can't. Uh, this monkey may be like pinned up there by the tail from Ferran's arrow, uh, but it is still like ducking and diving like no one's business. Uh. Maybe. Is it me next, or the warden? It is Miguel's. Next? Uh, yeah, no, you're right. It's the warden's turn. Uh, he is going to take an action to pull one of these things off from his neck, uh, which takes it to Miguel's turn. Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, go up to this with my daggers, one in each hand, uh, pull out these ceremonial daggers, and try to hit this little booger. Uh, main hand with a 24. 24 is going to get him. Uh, for five piercing. Yep, he was on his last hit point there. <laughs> Um, and how would you like to kill it? Uh, uh, I, I look at Farron and go, I'm just really just, he was already dead and I just sort of snap its neck. So, so it says, as though it was, see, he was already dead. You, you did it yourself, Farron. I had, I, I, you loosened it for me. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, honestly, I don't even know if she would know that he wasn't dead. And she's like, (laughs) thanks. (laughs) Um, 
Uh, can I help him pluck these things from his neck? We're out of combat, correct? Absolutely, yeah. You're out of combat now, uh, successfully. Um, and, yeah, you can, like, help him rip this thing off. You see, as, yeah, it just kind of pops right off. Um, oh. there are these, these, like, black sores and wells from where these things have uh, essentially, like, burrowed in. And then when they were tracked, it's like, um, it's like a barbed arrow tip. And you'd probably be familiar oh. with this from, oh, from no. parents. As you pull them out, they do more damage uh, than on the way in. Sometimes they can, you know, rupture organs and arteries yeah. and stuff like that. As you, you pull them out of his neck, he starts bleeding heavily from his neck oh. right now. He's like, oh. I'm just gonna uh, help. And I rip like a piece of my robe off and I start oh. kind of like patting around his neck to try to hold the blood in. Um, so um anything, can I roll some medicine? Yeah, roll me medicine. <laughs> And a nine, I don't do much, my, um, <laughs> help. Yeah, he like falls down, he's on his knees at this point. Um, you got a bandage yeah. like round it, so the blood is like, you know, seeping I, into it. I'm oh a bit God. torn, I don't know if we should save him or not, he's a warden. M Miguel comes over and uh, seeing a person who is in need um, with his Asimar heritage, uh, it almost draws it him to him it's something uh with this uh, celestial blood that is within him of this good uh kotal khan it's he almost can't help himself his brain is sort of sh shouting out you can't do this you can't use magic uh but it, it's like his hands are drawn forward um start to glow prismatically and lay upon his neck and I use my Asimar healing hands uh, uh, feet attribute mm -hmm. ability. Uh, it heals him for two hit points um, as that uh, prismatic light flows out of uh, Miguel's hands onto his into this warden. It's it's definitely enough to you know keep him alive uh, at least for now. Uh, the blood flow kind of stops. Um, the wounds are still there. He's still got, you know, gaping wounds in his shoulder right now uh, and across his back where these things have just, like, raked their claws into him. Um, and they're, like, dead on the floor um, as you've, like, pulled them off. Uh, and they die in a very kind of, you know, like, stiff manner in the, the death position that they were in. Um, almost, like, scrunching up as though they were insects. Uh, and he kind of, like, oh, oh, oh. And he's he's seen the magic like you're you've done upon him, and his you know his eyes kind of his eyes widen. Who are you? I am from Mazteca. I am visiting in the city. We were we heard your calls, your your battle. Uh, we had to help. Are there more of these little creatures? They're everywhere. Uh, up there, down uh, here. How is in the castle? Upstairs in the castle. Yes. Yes. Is it invasion or localized? I don't know. All I know is I was sent down here. The rest of my patrol, but they've all been wiped out. It's just Are you... me now. I, I am Sir Carrion. Officer Carrion, are are you one of these wardens that we have heard about who have protected the city from the undead scour scourge? We have heard of you even across the sea in Schult. He's, you don't have to roll me a deception check here. He's like almost, you know, passing out. Yes, I am. I'm a warden. Oh, I don't have to. Okay, but yeah, no need. No need. Yeah, he's like, you know, he's yeah. lo lost a lot of blood and he's pretty woozy. Yeah. Uh, it's, I'm a, one of the wardens. Uh, I don't remember any of your people being sent here and you should know that the magic you just used is highly illegal it is not magic it is just a part of my heritage i am i am not completely human uh mm -hmm. but i i would i will i will know not to do such things in the future i'm so sorry it's fine it saved it, um, my life how long have these little creatures been Attacking. Oh, uh, past few hours or so. So not to ask, you know, rub you the wrong way or nothing, but the uh, explosion that the lots of you said off, it didn't happen to, like, allow them in, did it? No, it was a, a different tunnel they came up through. I'm not sure from where. 
but they found the way in there immediately inside, and the whole place has been almost overrun. It's contained for now. Uh, contained? Contained inside the castle, or in a room in the castle? In the, inside the castle. It's, it's been contained. Uh, at least any... last time I was up there, I, I'm not sure if... I'm not sure if it is now. Uh, Lord Marcus Pontimus has uh, secured the perimeter, and well, I, I'm sure it will be safe at least for now. I, I doubt it's broken into the city yet. They were led by a woman, a creature. Uh, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about this this hill this hill woman, I the creature saw her woman? But a second, she left a wake of ruin wherever she went and headed straight towards the tower, the high mage, but. Not sure if she's been able to break in there. We couldn't even get in past the wards. Okay, dokie. So, can you walk, Mr. Sir Karen? I could try. All right, I'm going to help I must return to my post. If you've been called for by the High Lord Pontimus, then you should come with me back to past where my unit had been killed. We can find and join back in the perimeter. It's a bit of chaos inside the castle, but I'm sure we can sneak our way through the halls. As long as we don't get too close to the high tower. Um, can we just have a huddle? Just for a second. We just, just, just stay right here and don't die on us, okay? Um, uh, I like go over to everybody and be like, I'm a little confused. We can't bring the children back here. No. This is a mess, and he's saying he can't get in, which means she's probably locked up there in the tower. We've got to go save the heart mage. Yeah, she was after Esmeralda, or someone in the high tower. Why would she be after Esmeralda? We know why the wardens are after Esmeralda and the children. But why would this wake of ruin lady and her minion of you know, hairless monkeys Um, the, Zephyr will uh, turn back. To go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. And he will say, Were you able to quell those traitorous mages? We heard that there was trouble in the college. We figured I, that the wardens had finally had enough. Most of the uh, students managed to get away, but we weren't really interested in them anyway. All we wanted was the, uh, the high mage. That's what Did you get her? Wants. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Okay. You get, uh, the wards on the tower are too strong. You go there and you get burned alive. I think the creature, whatever she was, was trying to get through there with her own magics, but there's only one thing she could want in there, and that's access to Avalon. Do you think uh... that she was summoned here by the High Mage? Summoned here? Maybe she... Mm. Yeah, maybe it's allies. Zephyr does not believe this. Yeah. Could, could be. He, he nods. Those mages have been known to summon things from other realms before, and that's what Avalon is. We should get you back to your regiment. How can we help get you there? Through the sores, or what is the best way so that we do not encounter any more of these creatures? We certainly are not as strong as you are, and you uh, there's an barely entrance made which, through with your life. There's an entrance which my unit came through, which leads up to the, one of the walls. That's where, that's where we're holding for now. Give me a contained. That's that's the most important thing, because if if not, this could be another incursion. We fought many wars, but they came from the walls before, and we could hold them there. Uh, and this much is true as well, based on you know you guys' knowledge of the wars of the undead. They were like battered against the walls, and the wardens held them against the walls. You know, Helm's Deep style. These guys, uh, yeah. you know, did not break. Um, and this looks like, however, you know, we're. For, from what you've heard, these undead creatures had like millions of them, you know, like absolute hordes. There were a lot of footprints in there uh, from from before, but this looks more like a like a, a like a skirmishing group uh, or yeah. a, a vanguard <laughs> than a whole force. Uh, if there were an army in Neverwinter, you guys would know of it by now. Yeah. Okay. I've got a really bad sneaking suspicion, but. Let's get this guy, let's get this warden out of the mix uh, and try to get him back. I don't know if we're going to be able to lose him or not, but let's get him, let's get him 
at least out of our hair. And so he's not as suspicious as I'm sure he already is of us. There's one way to lose him. Are you suggesting we leave him down here for the monkeys to eat? It doesn't look like he can walk on his own. I have a bit of a more quandary with that idea. We can't do that. How right. we are gonna need a good excuse as to why we was down here. Cause we surely enough ain't wardens. He's not gonna provide that. He's not. But we did save him, so at least we got that. That's good coming yeah. have you later. So you know, we don't want to, I don't want to have big long conversation in, like behind this guy's back. I say we start staggering him back towards his. Yeah, you know, we've got to get him somewhere safe. And maybe they'll provide us with more information simply because we was nice. People like nice people, right? I, That's I still want to sort of ditch him somehow, but I <laughs> think you just kill him now in cold blood. I mean, that's me player talking, but. Yeah, yeah, I guess we'll just move it. We need to take him back. Well, I guess that's the plan is to help him back to yeah. his station. Someone helps him. I'll help him. You all just go on ahead. I'll help him. Just scout out the area up ahead. Oh, um. I've got him. You can scout the areas ahead. Take me back to my unit. I can, <laughs> I can take you to the, my lord, Marcus Fontenois. He's on the wall. He'll know what to do. That sounds like a great idea. Okay, dokey. We should all hear what he has to say. I agree. Okay, yep, let's do it. Take him. Make it so. All right. So you <laughs> Yeah, I know in. what you were trying to do, Greg. <laughs> I... I'll take him off on my own. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, guy. I wasn't trying What's to. What's that sound of someone it? dying was... in there? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Just gotta stay back here. Just... <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, you all yeah, I, mean, I would say that we shouldn't split up because Lord knows we've almost died in these damn sores twice. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, we're just going to stay together. We're going to help him get to where he's got to go. All right. Sounds like a plan. So uh, you head with Sicarion, who is, you know, on his uh, last <laughs> legs, but uh, being carried by uh, Zephyr, uh, manages to get up. And he comes to, he brings you to a different, like, sewer hatch uh, from, from Mutt's Hole, which, you know, it's, you have to know where you... <laughs> You really have to know where you're going to get to Muscle. <laughs> uh, I died the damn truth. <laughs> you, if you haven't been there before, you'll never make it you, there. You'll never way. find the hole. Exactly. Mutt's hole, that is. You, gotta you can't have a pipe, you'll never find the hole. Yes. <laughs> it's very much like uh, the island in Paris, the Caribbean one. Uh, it's <laughs> a place that can only be found, except for no who know where it is. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you get uh, to this other sewer entrance, and you pretty have to, like, you know, <laughs> invents a series of levers and pulleys uh, to carry carry on up there uh, and he like comes up through the, the hatch um, and oh so carry on by the way is a brief description um, he is like a big guy probably like 6'4 human uh, uh, black hair big black beard um, and uh, rugged good looks in his you know 40s or somewhere like that uh, so he like pulls himself up uh, <laughs> Greg's like oh, yeah. I like that <laughs> <laughs> I like that uh, he pulls himself up, and you guys, you know, light is above. If not carrying Miguel is right there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> he looks like the, uh, the 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 protagonist from Dragon Age Two, is what I'm picturing it. Uh, yeah, uh, he pulls himself. Yeah, man crush. <laughs> man crush. Pulls himself up onto the the wall. You see light up ahead. Uh, even though you know you guys were in pitch blackness, it is dark when you guys come up. You know, like probably two, three a.m. at this point, uh, and. Um, Pull yourselves up onto this wall. Immediately, Sir Carrion is helped up by another gauntleted hand. Uh, uh, you know, brings him straight up there. Uh, and as you guys are, are pulled up, you uh, are around uh, three or four other wardens, uh, still wearing this armor. They look like they have been in the wars. Uh, these guys are like ash all over their face and armor, uh, cuts and bruises and wounds. Uh, huge like welds in their armor, where you can tell these creatures have like. Uh, the, 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 the tails of these undead monkeys have like pierced through plate mail into their uh, you know into their chest past their, past their chain mail as well uh, so this is like the force of a lance at full speed it looks like the power behind these tails uh, and uh, on this wall there are three or four of them bring him up uh, Sir Kerion, uh immediately takes control of the scenario and he says these 
these four here are, are with me. We must take them to uh, Marcus Pontimus. And they nod after you know brief introductions. Um, you can tell as you're up on the wall that you're in the College of Majors. Uh, you can look out into the college campus itself, uh, and uh, there has been a silence which has fallen upon the uh, the area itself. But there are clear signs of battle, not just from the signs of battle from where you guys were involved in, uh, but there are these strain uh, strewn across the battlefield uh, wardens and these monkey creatures, uh, and all of it is headed up towards the tower. Uh, around the tower you can see there is a large contingent of these uh, monkey undead creatures. Uh, they all appear to be surrounding it. Um, there are probably 30, 40 of them or so. Uh, every now and again one of them tries to like climb uh, up the tower and immediately it gets like just burnt into incinerated into a crisp and the ashes fall down. Uh, but it looks like there are several figures, a large gathering uh, around the tower. Uh, the wall, the perimeter which surrounds it, is filled uh, with wardens uh, as you kind of pass along it, headed towards uh, this Marcus Pontimus gentleman, uh, who you know to be the leader of the wardens. Uh, but there are far less than when you came in, uh, or when they came in the first time. They look like they've lost at least half their number or so. Uh, wow. And they're, they're, you know, they're getting to the point where mechanically they're needing to take long rests in order to refill you know, spell yeah. slots and channel divinity and that kind of thing. So they look fairly spent as a force. And looking out onto the, the city of Neverwinter confirms that there has been no invasion. Uh, there's no other fires alive in Neverwinter. But it looks like what the Wardens have done, have just contained this, you know, breach and haven't even been able to, you know, go out into the city to send for aid at the moment. Uh, so you guys are brought along the wall uh, until you reach this kind of central command tower when you brought inside... Uh, uh, along with Sir Carrion. Uh, inside here is uh, what looks to be what was once a like a classroom which has just been shelled out and they've like tossed all the tables uh, to form their barricades uh, by doors and the like. Uh, and in here where several other wardens are camped and uh, like healing uh, or resting, uh, you make out the figure uh, who you presume to be uh, the High Warden Marcus Pontimus. Uh, he is a very tall gentleman. Uh, he is probably virgin on seven feet tall. This guy is like the uber final fantasy paladin uh, that you've that you've never ever seen before. You know, he's got this huge uh, warhammer strapped onto his back, uh, which glows with divine energy and crackles with it at all times. Uh, just to carry this thing on your back must be a huge burden uh, and beneath the layers of plate mail you can tell that he's been fighting as well you know the ashes upon him and the welds and the armor and the like uh, he himself has quite a, a, a narrow hawkish face um, and uh, he looks at the, the, the group of you as uh, Carrion comes in he says uh, Carrion says oh, my, my lord this these here are <clears throat> they saved my life in the sewers my unit are dead. All of them. Gone. I should make some introductions. I, but I don't know their names. He looks um, towards... Uh, he looks towards Miguel, first of all, as the one who's kind of... Who introduced himself first as being from Azteca. Um, so... Sure. Uh, yes, I am... Uh, he, he, uh, can we say that we still have our masks on? Sure. I mean, we were at the party. We had put them on back at the party. And yeah, we I mean, went straight uh, to I didn't hear you take them off, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, Miguel sort of uh, sheepishly sort of takes off his mask and goes, yes, uh, hello, I am uh, Manuel. And uh, yes, I, I visiting your city. I was indulging at a, a gnome house party. It was quite a, quite a spectacle. Uh, it had flowed out into the street and... Uh, then we, uh, well, we got a bit adventurous, but uh, it's, this is a, uh, we got caught up in everything, but we're glad we were able to help. Um, hi. <laughs> hmm. uh, he uh, gives you a thin little smile. You can roll me a deception check here. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I'm good at this, but it's still going to have to be a high roll, I'm sure. 19. Ooh. Nice. Uh, he, uh, you know, raises an eyebrow. It is an interesting story. Uh, and he says, I mean, I do look like a freaking showgirl <laughs> in my armor. 
This is uh, this is very true. Um, everybody can roll me a charisma saving throw. Oh, oh God! Oh, here it comes. Whether or not it's the truth, big old cone of truth coming right at us. Rufus smiles a big, nervous smile. <laughs> yeah. Zephyr gets deeper in his hood. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, so everyone fails this. Um, oh. The uh, magic uh, kind of crackles forth from his warhammer, and he seems to like draw it with his hand, and just forms a kind of like a circle in this whole room. And he says, "Wow, that is a very interesting story." So, and uh, you know, his eyes narrow. He looks like he's he, he you know he couldn't tell whether that was a lie, uh, but certainly now you can sense that you are in a zone of magic. Now it seems like I have a situation on my hands. Uh, who are the rest of y'all? Looks towards uh, Rufus first of all. Um, I'm I'm Rufus Big B. I'm just a I'm just a man. I'm just a man. I see. That's all. That's all. I'm just here. Um, you know, I like to help people, like your friend here. I stopped his neck from bleeding out. I can see that, and uh, you have my thanks for saving Carry On. Looks towards Ferrin. Why does he sound like my dad? <laughs> I love this accent, and I'm gonna pick it up so fast. I feel like, it's, a, I feel like oh, wow. it's misplaced. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, she's like, um, my, my name's Ferrin, a uh, Ferrin Hulling, and um, and uh, I'm just a woman with Rufus, and we're friends, and we travel together because we're friends. That would indeed seem to be the case. And you, my friend. Zephyr, I'm a sailor. I see. Now, I don't need to know why y'all are creeping around in the sewers just yet, because you might be useful to me. But tell me, how much do you know about the situation going on here? You well, attacked the cut. What, what Carrion told us, and what we can see. Yeah, only what he told us and what we can see. Okay, so while you're in the zone of truth, just to remind yeah. you guys, because we're going to be probably uh, dancing around the truth, uh, you are aware that the spell is upon you. So, mm -hmm. uh, affected creature is aware of the spell and thus can avoid answering questions to which it would normally respond with a lie. Such creatures can be evasive in its answers as long as it remains within the boundaries of truth. truth. Yeah. <sighs> but you can't we speak know. a deliberate lie. Yeah. Okay, we know that Jews attacks this here castle, and we know there's half f let mon the monkeys, uh, dead monkeys that are roaming about. That's what that's what I know. Yeah, we know what what your friend here told us, and we also know what we saw when we were coming in. Yep. I see. Oh. Well, I yes. have yep. a problem in my city, and uh, many of my wardens have been destroyed. I uh, may be looking to uh, seek some extra assistance if you are able. Seems like you have at least saved Carrion's life, so you may be useful. Sure. Uh, this is not a uh, question. I, I, I'm not asking you to help. I'm telling you that you are here to help. Or else you can face the law outside in the city if you want. No need for that. We, um, what does help look like in your book, sir? We need to get inside the high tower. The creature who I suspect to be some undead abomination who has summoned these creatures and fought her way into my city, broken inside and slaughtered several of the mages. Now, if you do not already have reason to defend your city and if you do not love your country as I do, then perhaps uh, this will help. He uh, goes inside, there's a nearby chest, um, and uh, he brings out uh, several uh, rings, uh, which have like blood on them. Uh, and he says, we buried the corpses, burned them, buried the ashes away, but several of the professors and, I hate to say it, but the students as well were not so lucky. While we were here to bring law to this place, it seems as though this she-devil has brought only death and destruction. I trust that you will all be helping me uh, in good faith as well as for fear of retribution. Now, whatever she is, she does not like divine 
magic. She certainly hates that, but she is stronger than most of my wardens. To go toe-to-toe to her, I, myself, it will be a close fight. She wants to get inside the high tower where we believe High Mage Esmeralda is hiding. High Mage Esmeralda has access to a great deal of spells. Well, magics, which lead to different dimensions. Inside these dimensions, in which mages are known to hide and cower away in fear, exist other beings. Creatures of chaos and malice. Sometimes they can seep through. Sometimes they want to go back. The mages think these places are safe refuges. There's one in particular High Mage Esmeralda looks to flee to, a place named Avalon. It is not as safe as she seems. If this undead abomination is allowed to get inside there, she will bring with her hordes of fury and death. And not just the undead, I'm talking about devils and demons, creatures from lower planes of existence who look to take over our world and make it their own. So, I'm a simple man, but can, I'm just wondering. I'm just, I'm just wondering if there's this bad lady coming through, turning things undead, which we all know don't magic. You know, don't matter if you're magic or not. We don't want undead walking the streets. We've been there, done that. And then this high mage is trying to open up the portal. Maybe she doesn't know that it's bad on the other side. Is there a way for us to negotiate and work together? Had not considered that line of questioning. Perhaps it is something that we could look into, but I doubt that Esmeralda's thinking of anything but her own safety right now. Mages are known to be cowards. Right. Well, we happen to be good negotiators. Is that so? Right? And I, like, jab Miguel on the side. And so maybe we I'm... could, you know... I must say, I very rarely fail at uh, talking people into new ways of thinking. And he gives a big smile up at this giant man. Hmm. Well, perhaps you could act as negotiators. I'll admit that my wardens are not necessarily the best at talking to mages. Perhaps uh, a group of normal people would be better fit speaking to Esmeralda. The problem being is I can't even get you inside. They're on dead around there, and that creature, she's out stalking, trying to bust her way inside. Could you Why don't perhaps... we search? Let us look right. at... We can check the sewers. We're acquainted with them. Okay. Yeah, there might be a sewer entrance or two around there. Makes sense. Maybe even... Maybe even the general sewers is a way into the... the tower, just where they would reclamate their own waste. Um, I do mention, we did see, in fact, a tunnel that that seemed to lead from outside the city with many footprints of these strange webbed creatures. Uh, It seems as though the swords might have been the way that they had access to this place. That might be something worth looking into as well. If so, we need to pull up that breach as fast as possible to make sure more of these demons don't spew forth. Could we... Um, I hate to put your men in the, you know, heat of battle again, men but... men are ready to die at a moment's notice. Well, that's good, because I'm feeling like a distraction's in order. What is your plan, simple man? Well, I would say if we could... Um, distract all the critters towards your men that would give us enough time to figure out ways to get into the tower while they was you know not looking at us or whatever so we could get in and speak with her i could see that being a plan Uh, all right but let's get some more wise brains in here as well you looks to ferrin what do you think about this situation here i think rufus had a great plan that, you don't need to tell him that he's not wise. Rufus is very clever. <laughs> I just, <I'm... laughs> Thanks, Aubrey. I appreciate it. And he blushes a little bit as she's sorry, getting kind of rosy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I was like, listen to a tournament it's all day today. Um, yeah, I, I, thanks, Baron. And his cheeks turn kind of uh, uh, 
Rosie and says, um, I've, I have some good ideas some, some, sometimes. Right. I think that is a good idea. I came up with the plan. I Sometimes I come up with plans. <laughs> and and Rufus's plan he just came up with just now is better than anything I've ever come up with in my entire life. Perhaps she I was, was like wrong. almost about to say, I came up with how we got here. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I was wrong. <laughs> Maybe I do owe you apology, Rufus. Uh, it's a very stressful situation I find myself in right now with the fate of my city in my, well, taken away from my hands. Very well. We can cause a distraction for you. You should let Every Rufus time. make you some tea if you're stressed. He's really good at that too. I find that uh, praying is the only uh, stress relief I need. That and smiting my foes. Amen. <laughs> Miguel just sort of looks over at Zephyr. <laughs> you pray. Uh, yeah, very okay, well. Okay, I guess we'll, we won't do it. Okay, never mind. Perhaps after all this is done, we can sit down and have a cup of tea and talk about how it is y'all got here and what exactly you're doing in these sewers, but uh, perhaps that's for another sure. time. Sure. We'll tell you everything. Uh, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Now, uh -huh. we'll cause a distraction, give you time to get in there. Maybe you can talk to Esmeralda, tell her to stop this portal, uh, get, us, get her out of there. If there's a way you can get her free, then that's the only thing to do. If this creature, if she gets her hands on Esmeralda or on the knowledge that she holds, then this Avalon ain't gonna be no safe place no more. We will definitely get Esmeralda out of there. Now, if we run into any of your men, can I do how an do insight we check on him for that big little speech that he just gave? Sure. Uh, can I have advantage so it's a nat 20? Never mind. <laughs> How will your men know that we aren't uh, working with the, the evil lady? Could you give us a, a writ or a, maybe on, one of those rings? You're not on dead, so you don't need that. Uh, okay. Yes, well, I guess none of us they might mistake us for them. people from the, the college. My men don't make mistakes. Okie dokie. Good that sounds Marcus Pompum. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he strikes you as incredibly arrogant and uh, uh, self uh, self contained in his own abilities and that of his men. Yeah, Marcus Pompum is. Okay, so um, I'm guessing we can see the like entrance to this tower pretty clearly. Yeah, uh, you can see, you know, uh, you know, it's not far from here, it's on the campus, but, you know, somewhere in the middle distance where surrounding this are these zombie monkeys. Occasionally one of them goes up and gets zapped by whatever wards Esmeralda's placed up and, you know, uh, but the sewer entrance is probably the better way to go for you guys. Yeah, so, uh, Will, how stressful has this conversation been? Has it been in any way restful and lasted for a short amount of time? <laughs> this, this conversation has not been restful whatsoever. Has it been a complete opposite in a zone of truth? <laughs> the high paladin. <laughs> yeah. Um, just checking. Just checking. Just yeah. thought I'd check. Yeah, he, you know, he does note that you guys are starting to look tired and says, my man needs rest as well. We could take a short rest here if you want and and then oh, we can yes. get two things. That would be nice. That would be very helpful. A zone of mimosas. <laughs> zone of tea. <laughs> oh, the we could brew some tea. Uh, sure. Make, yourself, <laughs> make yourselves at home. As soon as you're ready, let me know. Uh, he goes out to stalk the walls. So carry on is still in here with you, but the other... Uh, wardens are, you know, asleep or resting. And carry on says, okay. oh, that, that went quite well. He likes you. Oh, is that how he shows he likes people? He doesn't like a lot of people. He's, he's been defending the city for, against hordes of undead. It's, you must understand, it's stressful for our leader to see the city in such a way. If undead in our walls, we've all sworn an oath never to allow this to happen, and today we've all failed. Okay. Well, hey. we haven't failed yet. Between you and I, the warden, uh, Marcus Pontimus, he had a child here, yeah. an illegitimate uh, one. I'm, I'm sorry, come again. He has a, who was studying here as a mage? He's looking very woozy. I probably shouldn't 
Again, I said anything. Oh, hey, ha- hey, have some tea. Somebody get the tea. <laughs> the tea. <laughs> what the heck's going on? Have some tea. Well, that tea is really yeah, put, your, <laughs> put your feet up. That tea is hot and spicy. Yeah, uh, uh, roll me a persuasion check here, someone. Uh, here you go. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not going to roll that. Uh, okay. 14. Nice. Uh, he says, well, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit of an embarrassment for him. He has a illegitimate child, a boy, I think, who uh, goes here. He, uh, he's been looking for him, and, well, we found several of the... We know several of the children have escaped, but we also found some bodies as well. Some were unidentifiable. May have been a bastard child that the one did not ever consider his own, but still, it's... It's a tough reality to face, knowing that your child may be dead. I have a question. It's a terrible, terrible thing for a man to have to face. So tell me, uh, does Pontimus have any legitimate children? Or other, has he sired other children? None. Um, does this, is it, is it uh, you know, it takes two to tango, so they say, who, who's his mum? His mom? I don't know the details. All I oh. know is, he told me this in confidence, and well, it's just the blood loss speaking. You, so that's probably you, why you, he's you, so stressed out at the moment. You're yeah. just trying to be helpful here. You just, shh, shh, go to sleep. <laughs> wait, 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 before you go to sleep, <laughs> is he married? <laughs> go ahead. Oh. Is, is he married? No, oh, not, no, he's we <clears throat> swear to celibacy. Right, right. But this uh, was the and, conception. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> any thoughts on how old this boy might be? I, uh, like I say, I, I, I don't know, but he would have great talents, I'm sure. So yeah, will I mean? Can I do a couple history checks with you? <laughs> sure. <laughs> One would be, seeing as this is an almost seven foot tall, hawk faced gentleman with very <laughs> strong genes. First thing, do I, you know, do, do one of my kids with a great arm that like killed a guy in one <laughs> shot happen to have, be kind of overly large and have a hawk faced features? <laughs> hello, hello, strong gened man. Yeah, roll me a history jacket. If I recall that, that would be a four oh, and a four. You don't, it was all a blur, you know. All a blur. So here's my other one, and just you know, when my when role play just plays off, I've got to ask because I've just got to ask. Oh no! Does um, by any chance, does uh, Syndra Sylvain wear a uh, size seven Gucci pumps? <laughs> like I saw from Yeah, history check would be difficult now. What about history check again? Yeah, it's true. That'd be a six. Oh, yeah. oh my god! You, you never—the one regret that Miguel has is he never got her shoe size. He never got her shoe size. <laughs> she really like, is woman, the one, one day that got I'll away. Get yeah. her in the no, no Cinderella story tonight. Um, I don't really understand. Like, um, you know, it's not my business to judge, and I'm not—I'm uh, not judging. But um, if he was worried about his son maybe getting murdered or something, then. Do you think maybe you would have come in with a better uh, plan than just this big explosion that killed a bunch of people? The explosion did not kill anyone. We didn't harm any of the students, only knocked out several of the teachers who were troublesome and known to be meddlers and demon summoners. And you're holding them here? Yes. Those that we captured are downstairs in the cells. Well, we've turned them into cells. Probably they were latrines. So you don't think that it might have been um, a good idea to maybe warn the students since they weren't a target at all? You, I, I mean, I feel Listen, like that was they, really poorly planned. I'm not paid to think. I just follow my orders and hunt demon summoners and necromancers mm. and the like. Just so, following orders, son. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, all right, well, all right. We, um, I will fight to death to protect my city and my country. Do you question that? No, no, it, no questions here. You, you are you are doing a great service to everybody here. We did sure. not mean to imply anything. Just 
it is uh, a shame that so many have been injured and that undead have somehow made it, taken advantage of this, uh, of the law and order that you were bringing to this, our fair city. Of course, it is simply that I have, we have all failed our oath today. That is why I'm stressed out. It's been a, it's been a really tough week, you know, and the wife, she thinks she's pregnant and we're not sure. I mean, she's, we're celibate. <clears throat> I wasn't, wasn't saying it. <laughs> um, you know what, Joe Nade? You drink this hot cup of tea right here. Rufus hands it over. Oh, and, you. and And you just... You just go to sleep. Uh, just, just have some sleep and oh, feel better okay. in the morning. We're going to do the same thing because okay. I have this feeling that we're all a little grump grump. That's right. <laughs> my, my scruff voice is, is actually difficult to do for a long, long time. So <laughs> you need some tea on I'll, that. I'll You'll be better in the morning. Yeah. I sympathize. I'm starting to sound like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do you see? Tell you that tomorrow hey, night. Batman. Hey. So will. All the time. Sorry. <laughs> when you talk about the tower, is it a specific single tower, or is it like the main building it you're like, calling? Yeah, it is the main tower. In? Yeah, there are there are sub towers around it. From where this better view from up on the wall, looking across, can we? F do we have any idea what's whether whether Mutt's hole might get us underneath these wards? It's possible. Um, you would. Uh, it's not specifically Mutt's hole, uh, but there are other sewers around there, you know? Like, you know, this this tunnel was a different one from Mutt's hole, so, like, it's possible that there's one around here. Um, you could probably find a way into the other towers from Mutt's hole, um, and then possibly there's a route, you know, you, you know, with jumping over or some rope you could get inside the other tower. Uh, okay. That's something that's possible. Well, didn't Dravens go directly into the high tower? Say that again, sir? Didn't Dravens go directly into the high tower? Oh, it was yeah. very, very, very close to it. Um, well, but we dropped the ceiling on it. Yeah, you also dropped uh, the ceiling on it. <laughs> okay, I'm sure there's some other way out. Yeah, uh, you could you know, presumably clear a path through that uh, with some spells or magic. It was very close. It wasn't directly inside, uh, but it was like it's probably its own tower, right? You know, part of one of the towers next to it. So yeah. getting in from there, there presumably is some kind of entrance. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it, I mean, it sounds like we could probably. I don't know if the other professors could help, but it sounds like it'd be really easy to get to them since their like cells are like. Oh yeah, the, sewer. the, the sewers are. Probably... Uh, sewers are literally. Uh, sorry, not the sewers. The latrines are literally downstairs. So you guys are in like a tower block of your own right now, and you're on one floor. And the carry on said that you know downstairs basically is where the they're keeping the mages. Uh, so it seems very possible that you could go in the very just have a conversation and get some information from them. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, okay. No, I was just thinking, um, I assume they're guarded. Um, but during, if we have him do like a frontal assault uh, with all of his troops, let's say like in an hour, and instead of us being over at the other tower or down there with the teachers, we get the teachers. But I do think we need to figure, I think we've got to try to get to the main tower because. I, I have a feeling if we speak with the other mages, they may give us some insight as to either how to get into the tower that she has a spell on or will tell yeah. us a secret way in. Okay. Yeah. I bet like that they know a way. Like as simple as like, you know, the janitor down there has got a master yeah. key. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah you know, or we crawl up through the toilets or something, you know, like yeah. they can at least. Uh, yeah, apparate up the toilets. Exactly. Yeah. You know, um, Actually, you can't operate so, within Hogwarts. Uh, all right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, what I'm gonna I let you guys do actually, as you guys are uh, figuring out your plans and taking a short rest, I'm gonna go do the tomb insight slash. I don't know what kind of insight it is now. It's economic insight. Uh, so I'll give you guys a break for five minutes. We'll be back We're talking about economics, fun stuff, but no maps. Uh, we'll see the players again in a minute. All right, we're getting rid of them. Let's go over here. Let's go over to my PowerPoint presentation for the day. Of course, learn by play is not all just play. There is some learning. There will be a test at the end. No, there won't actually be a test because that would involve me having to write a test, which I'm not going to do. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the fun stuff, economics. Uh, well, actually, it's usually really boring stuff, right? It sounds like super, super damn boring. But it is actually something that is really important, I think, and can lead to a lot of fun stuff.
as well. So let's 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 click on our PowerPoint. So why should I bother? The question I ask myself every morning uh, when I wake up. Uh, global economics of a fantasy world can be an important element of world creation, as it can create. Oh, he's got three bullet points ready. Look at this guy. He's prepared. Realism and immersion, conflict and drama, and a way to handle loot distribution. So I thought. Um, a couple of a couple of things about this, and we'll actually go into more detail on these, but real quick. Realism and immersion, like, the more elements of um, fantasy worlds which exist in real worlds, it, the more the world makes sense to me. Uh, and it makes sense, and in every fantasy world, it, the realms, for instance, it has a uh, an economic system which has been created, right? Whether or not in your own homebrew world, your economic system is everyone is a farmer, or everyone is a miner, or everyone is some kind of adventurer, because there are a bunch of different systems that we'll talk about. Um, it helps to make the world feel more real. Uh, that rhymed. Conflict and drama. Uh, economics <laughs> fuels a lot of drama in our, in, and conflict in our real world, uh, and the same goes for fantasy worlds as well. When there are economic depressions, that is a, a perfect time for, for conflict to come into your story. When it comes to war, that affects the economy greatly. Um, and that is also another uh, great point that we'll be talking about later on, actually. And then finally, a way to handle loot distribution. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, how do I give out loot? How do I do money? How do I give out magic items in particular? And the base for that, and the base for thinking about high magic, low magic, I think, is the economy of these worlds and thinking about uh, yeah, what kind of systems are in place and why as well. Always ask yourself why. So, uh, realism and immersion, let's go into the first point more so. And if you guys have any questions as well, feel free to, to pop them into the chat and I'll try and get to them as we go here as well. Um, <laughs> for a true second. Okay, so, uh, when talking about realism, consider how different town cities, factions interact with one another. So, what I mean by that is, um, there's supply and demand. There's like a Let's go to economics 101. Supply and demand, right? So there is a demand for something, therefore someone needs to supply it. Um, so, are most of the people in the region of your world lay farmers, lay miners? If so, what do they farm? What do they mine? Then you ask yourself the question, who needs that resource? So if they are mining for diamonds, uh, if the, the main economy in your world is everyone's just got loads of diamonds or just uh, gems or something like that, magic gems, let's say. Um, who needs magic gems? Okay, well, mages need magic gems, and uh, adventurers need magic gems for like spell components and stuff like that. Uh, maybe elves need magic gems. Maybe that's part of their 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 world. I don't know. Maybe uh, the elves uh, have like great cities built out of giant gems, and that's why they need them. Maybe it is simply like uh, a, a resource, or um, yeah, it's like a, a money basically. There's a word for that. Um, but this can lead to the creation of a factional town. When you start thinking about these things, when you start asking yourself the questions, um, why are they doing this? Who needs this resource? That can immediately lead to, you know, we just created a, a city right there, a city of elves who live in giant gem formation houses, like crystal houses, like crystal maze. Uh, so what is the economy and why is that the case? For instance, when you think about like our traditional like European medieval stuff, we've got like a, a peasant economy of uh, farmers, right? And everyone farms the land. Or you think of even back as far as ancient Greece, everyone farms the land. Why do they do that? Because everyone needs food. Um, and there are different resources that go into that, right? Like oil is is a highly sought after uh, resource, and that's used for something else. But the basic thing is often just food. So you can think about that. Uh, oh, this is too big. It's too big. Damn it. Anyway, uh, I'll just I'll just say what the bits down there are. So let's take an example, because I I just did one right there. But let's do another one. One I've pre-written. In the city of Neverwinter, many of the workers on the docks are actually pirates and involved in illegal activities. This is something that we did uh, last episode. We kind of established that the canon just sort of came along and writing it into the world. Why are there pirates? Often I start with like a cool idea that I've had. So it's like, I want there to be pirates here. And I'm like, okay, work backwards from that. Working backwards from a point is often easier than working forwards to a point with these things. So, um, why are there pirates? Why has everyone turned to, to piracy? Why has everyone become Barbosa? Why? Due to the war, many of the nearby farms and mining settlements have been raised. The crops are bad and people need to find some kind of living. Uh, There's also a sinful rise of the Zentarim. So, 
when you consider the fact that there has been like a big war in the area, um, often after wars there are big economic depressions, and this is the same in history as well. You know, like the years after uh, like World War One or World War Two, England is like in a really bad economic state because we use all of our resources to fund wars and everything goes into like winning wars and after they're done you're left with often you know like burnt out villages people are dead there's not enough people to work in the first place so you know this can actually lead to a fair amount of uh, illegal and illicit activities and indeed this look at war again you know the black market was right so how does this affect trade in neverwinter i'll swing over here uh, other coastal cities are finding it hard to trade with Neverwinter. They are sending their ships over. You know, let's, let's take an example of a city like Luskin, um, or Waterdeep. In fact, Luskin in our world has been uh, taken over by undead, so let's take like Waterdeep. Ships from Waterdeep, merchants from Waterdeep are trying to trade with Neverwinter, but there's all this piracy going on, and it makes it difficult. What does that mean? That means that there are less resources coming into Neverwinter, and the situation gets worse. These situations often compound themselves. Um, so when you think about that, they're trying to get resources to Neverwinter, trying to get like food there. Uh, or maybe there's some resource that we could think of that they need uh, and they just can't get it uh, because of this piracy. Let's lead it into a bit of our conflict and drama that we've talked about as well. So another way that this uh, economy change is going to affect our world is that pirates have a bounty on their heads. Uh, from the you know the, the, the guard and sedentary forces of Neverwinter and probably Luskin as well. Uh, that means that um, there's a quest right there just waiting to happen. Um, Pirates of the bounty on their heads, PCs could go over and get kill some pirates and get some money for it, or they could get involved with the pirates and be part of this economy as well. So, uh, simple solution, get rid of Neverwinter. <laughs> he's, he's only gone and bloody done it. So, um, that's an example right there. I've got some other bits we can talk about as well. Oh yeah, I was talking about loot, how to distribute loot. Previously, previously on Learn by Play, uh, we discussed about high, low fantasy worlds how that can shape the world. If you're having a difficulty considering if you want to do high fantasy, if you want to do low fantasy, think about the economy. Um, and this can really affect <laughs> everything that goes on in trade. Um, and you think about the economy, it's like every single thing that gets traded in this world is that, you know, there's food, there's potatoes, there's the normal foodstuffs. That's also adventuring gear. That's also swords. That's also, you know, like armor and uh, magic items as well. Speaking of which, in a high magic world that has a strong economy, magic items and loot may be easily available from market stall vendors at reasonable prices. You go to the DMG to see some prices, by the way. Um, that means that if you're in this, like, super high fantasy world, let's take, like, the Forgotten Realms as it is normally, it's not unreasonable for there to be a magic shop on every corner uh, or, you know, a magic shop in every village or every town or someone selling wares. And for those wares to be at reasonable prices, you know, the prices that you might see in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Uh, why? Because there's so much of it around. There's so magic, much magic around that it's normal. Um, and that means that these things trade at a reasonable price, you know, like a, an average sort of price. In a struggling economy where things are going bad uh, or take a lower magic world, the uh there may be regulations controls who can own magic items uh, i feel that's a question that doesn't get asked a lot in dungeons and dragons because it is just accepted in the realms that people adventurers walk around with magic items it's like okay but if i had a deck of many things i am an absolute danger to society at hand right <laughs> or if i'm going around with a plus plus 10 long sword i could just carve through someone like butter then surely that is a danger to society so um there may be a question that the government or some other you know law force uh has increased the price of them um to you know to make it difficult for you know average workers to have them uh or it may lead to you know it's a quest right there pcs having to go another way to go and uh purchase them so, consider how magic items are dealt in your world, you know, due to the economy. Is it a really you know, high magic world, strong economy, everyone's selling magic items left, right and centre? Is it that you can buy them, but they're super expensive and only if you have, you know, maybe some kind of, you know, licence or warrant? Do you have a licence for that magic item, sir? Um, because that's something that I think, you know, very well might exist, particularly in a place like a city, right? You come into a law-abiding city, it's like, okay, magic items are checked out the gate, please. You know, maybe they have to go through security to get their magic items in. Uh, it's, like, it's like going to America. Uh, or, you know, maybe there's a rife black market. We actually have uh, a, an NPC in this game. Uh, he sells things 
uh, who is a tabaxi who sells magic items on the down low because magic items are being regulated and controlled by the wardens. All right, onwards. War. What's it good for? So, not this. Um, so, uh, one of the large scale conflicts that often are a centerpiece of Dungeons and Dragons is war. Uh, but it doesn't have to be war. It could be any other large-scale conflict. This is one of the things we talked about, I believe, in our first session of uh, this season. Is, you know, the big drama that's going on. You know, is there a, a large, you know, war going on? Are demons filling into uh, this world? Are end undead rising up everywhere? You know, with Tomb of Annihilation, we had the death curse. That's something that's going on. Um, think about how something that big will affect the rest of your world uh, as you go. Uh, to cancer of endless water and screw trying to get free bond security. Man, I've, I've tried so many times. Uh, neighboring settlements rely upon one another to exist. If the dwarven gold mines get destroyed, how does this affect the gnomes they traded with, right? So, um, you know, if the, if the dwarves are destroyed by the marauding orcs, the, the settlement of uh, uh, a matriarchal uh, tribe of orcs that we created, uh, or Ferris, uh, a couple of weeks ago. How does this affect the gnomes they trade? Well, the gnomes no longer have gold uh, to trade with everyone else. Um, and also, it may mean that, uh, you know, the rest of the economy is, is, is like, a, like a domino effect, right? So if one resource is really important, and they, the settlement number two really needs it, and then they can't get it, then that means that they can't sell to settlement number three, and so on and so forth. So you see how these things can get out of hand. Um, if there's no one able to spy an army with food and grain, how does that tip the scales of war? Uh, war has been, you know, battles have been lost and won off, you know, can we get supplies to this army? Um, can we, you know, feed them? You know, let's think of like Stalingrad, you know, that something like that is it's super important. Just being able to get people, uh, you know, like <laughs> warm jackets or food and water and supplies are really important. Uh, these are issues you can involve your players in as well. They don't have to just be boring things that, you know, just happen. Um, and by that I mean, like, you can make a note of these things as you're going on. Something I try and do when I'm writing campaigns and playing through a campaign is make a note of different events that they have, uh, that have happened. And particularly it's cool when the players can see that their actions have affected the game and the economy is a really easy way to show that. It's, let's go on to this. So this is touching on realism again, but it's also touching on conflict and drama and pretty much all of our points. Consider how immersive it is to see the effects that war or whatever conflict you've got going on in your own campaign uh, has had upon the world, aside from just people being dead. Uh, people being dead is an obvious one, right? Like, oh, my, my village has been burned down by orcs, and now I'm a ranger, and now all I do is fight, and I want to be an adventurer like you. Uh, you know, um, that is one thing, sure. And, you know, people being dead is definitely a thing that happens in war, no doubt. But millions of people get affected by things by this and more so than just themselves being dead you know think about the great war uh men go off to die but you know the women and children are left behind and they are also extremely affected by everything that goes on the pcs could come across a village of people destitute because their farms have all been burned down or churned up by soldiers uh can certainly affect that a an, an army moving through um, uh, you know, fields uh, for days can have upon the, you know, the agriculture can destroy things. Villages can be uh, turned into, um, you know, like halfway homes for soldiers where they come in and settle in these places and the economy of the place just changes inherently. Um, a merchant that they know has had all of their magic items confiscated by local authorities and lost all business. Sounds like a quest in the making. Uh, consider how these different elements uh, of Oh, there we go. Go about that. Consider how these different elements of economies can affect and shape your world, and as your players and affect and shape your world, uh, how that changes as well. It makes the game feel a lot more real, um, and it can help create factions, uh, create different elements that are going on in the game, and just add towards the general drama and conflict that's going on. Uh, often, I think it's something that gets overlooked, uh, and I think it's an important part of the the world that often we don't consider because it is boring. Uh, but it can be fun, and hopefully, I've showed you guys, it can be a little bit fun. Um, War is also good for new weapons and forms of weapons to be created and enhanced, but it does deplete resources, absolutely. Um, you know, new things get invented during wartime because they have to, as often arms races go on, you know, one group creates one weapon, another creates another, and so on and so forth. Uh, and it just, you know, continues to uh, raise the ante, indeed, like a soul monger. But, um, let us head over back to our players, and let's see... 
Let's not longer talk about economics. Let's talk to them about Dungeons and Dragons. Let's just play, goddammit. Uh, we've got lots of the players back here, um, and I believe we're about to uh, do some things, talking to some mages, maybe. What do you guys want to do? Yep. Yeah. We, we decided that we're going to go get the kids, take the boat, and go on a cruise. We're, we're oh, done with great. this. Cruise. Yeah. It'll be damn the undead. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so them. you're in the you're in a tower, the College of Mages. So carry on there. He's falling asleep. Other wardens are around. Downstairs, you know there are professors. You're trying to get into the tower. Uh, it's a uh, bunch of undead zombie monkeys around it. You need to find a way inside. I think we've decided that we want to go talk to the professors and yeah. probably get Pontimus's blessing or permission to do so. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Pontimus is around. If you wanted to speak with him. I'll go ask him. Um, or yeah, it, do you want to or I can? Either way. I don't know. I got plus four. You got plus six. So I'm not very charismatic. You, you want to be risky? You can go for it. I mean, I'll do it. I'll do it. You, Hold you, my you already, I was gonna say you've already you know, charmed him with your way about uh, and and uh, charmed him about Rufus, whereas I'm just the weird guy, the weird the weird peacock. Right, the weird let's, let's, let's have fair do you see uh, weird parrot. You, you know, he's he's just outside on the wall looking out and he's like organizing the troops to get ready for your distraction. Oh can great. I, can I help you? Um, yes. So um you know the the plan that we had, uh, we're we're still completely going with that one, but we had an idea that might make it even better. I'm willing to hear it out. Okay, so we're thinking, um, you know, you got these other professors uh down in the in the bathroom place uh <laughs> downstairs. Yes. That is correct. Right. So, um, I don't we're like thinking. Where this is going. <laughs> we're thinking that um, they might know some uh, different way to get into the tower. Maybe they've got some sort of spell that we can manipulate to do it, or maybe there's someone down there that has something as simple as a mastered key. So we're thinking that um. We just wanted to get your blessing to go down there and talk to them and ask them if they could help us maybe get into the into the high tower so we can do uh, what you need us to do. That that's 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 my pitch. Sorting with mages isn't usually the way I like to go, but all right, I'll allow it. You can talk you. to them, but if they tell you anything about demons and devils or try to raise some undead in there, then my wardens will be watching. Yes, um, yep. uh, that makes total sense. Uh, that's totally fine. I promise you we're not going to let you down. We're going to do a really good job. I, I promise. If you um, manage to find any incriminating evidence upon them, or if any of them confesses to their crimes, then be sure to let us know. Okay, and the crimes we're looking for are the summoning the demons and the undead and uh, like setting people on fire and stuff? That's right. We're also looking for charges mm -hmm. of general shenanigans. Uh, general shenanigans? Bad stuff they might have been doing. Ah. Uh, uh, okay, um, I can, okay, yes. Um, thank you, I'll go back and I'll go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go tell them and then, uh, and then we're you gonna go that, and then. young lady. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she, I'm like, she like turns around like hop, skip and a jump back over and she's like, he loved it, he thinks it's a brilliant plan, he gave us his blessing, and so we're gonna go down there and talk to them, and then we're also gonna try and convict them of gener general, general shenanigans while we're down there. But right. I like shenanigans. I'm a maybe, big maybe the last part we'll just save for a rainy day. Arion looks up. General shenanigans was one of our best. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel a new. I feel a new. A, a new character coming on. I want the, I want the party with that. With yeah, that, with that General gentleman. Shenanigan. Uh, I'd like that's, to take him to lunch and buy him a drink. Last night, um, that's a new general if I ever heard one. <laughs> last night, he's away on a booze cruise. <laughs> you know, I, oh, I think our new captain, Captain Shenanigans. Captain Shenanigans. That's at least what we'll call him as an homage. Well, we digress. Right, we? So, if we've gotten his blessing to go speak with the teachers, um, what is it? We'll wait. No, let's go. Yeah, let's I'm, head I'm down to the very latrine. Excited for this. You head down into the latrine's area, past several wardens who kind of nod at you respectfully uh, as as you you go down. Entering into this dark latrine area, it really just, just stink down here uh, as the, the smells do waft up from the sewers that you guys have been in previously. Like, you're probably a little bit immune to it after your nose has been down there for so long. Uh, this is probably just, just normal air to you guys now. Um, there are several professors down here. Uh, 
10 to 12 of them. Um, and uh, they're all like in their robes, they're chained and shackled up, and there are several wardens down here who are constantly watching them. They have been uh, stripped of all of their magical foci and materials, so they're basically down to their, uh, their briefs at this point. Um, yeah, you've got your choice. Did you really just put Miguel into a room with a dozen people chained to the wall in their briefs? I'm just checking. Yeah, the last I last I checked, that just happened. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just yeah. realized. If you what need to recap said. that, <laughs> hold him back. Just, just hearing him. myself saying it now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Rufus shields his eyes. Uh, uh, Miguel uh, doesn't. Which one? Which which one do we talk to? Uh, one of the uh, the the women kind of uh, pipes up. Who who are you? Are, are you here to get this out? We are here, and I look, how far away are the wardens uh, oh, from all of this? Definitely within uh, uh, ear shots at this point. They are they're here to listen. There is also, you'll notice that one of them has like a zone of truth going almost at all times to stop the oh, okay. mages from lying. My name's Farron Holling. <laughs> okay. Um, we we came just to ask you a couple questions. Uh, we're, we're here to help. Okay, are you with the wardens? We are, how you say, a privatized party. We don't really stand on one side or the other. Okay, so, um, all right. Uh, can I help you with something? I'm a little bit tied up here. Why, yes, yes you are. Miguel, oh don't hit on the slaves. <laughs> They're not slaves, they are teachers. They have probably much to teach about many, many, many things. Um, Zephyr prepares a bucket of water. <laughs> a cold bucket, bucket of water? water. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we, um, we know that you are in tune with the magics. And um, I know you've been down here for a while, but since they put you in chains and all, there are some undead. That have taken over upstairs and so we're here to maybe um mitigate the issue um we need some more maybe information if you knows anything about i do oh um, my name is macy by the way i'm a professor here i study alchemy hello macy how are you today Miguel. i'm i'm having a terrible day many of my students and professors have died and now i'm pinned up here half naked to a wall and there are undead within the college. So I, this is probably the worst day of my life. <clears throat> I look down, well, we're, in the zone of, we're in the zone of truth, aren't we? <laughs> 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 yes, this probably is not a very good time. Uh, anyway, uh, do you know, you know a way to get into the, into the tower? Which, the, the high mage's tower? Correct. Yes. Maybe not through the front door. If I tell you, then they're going to get in there and they're going to kill her. No, we're going to get in there and we don't have plans to kill her. <laughs> Rufus's face. Uh, roll me, uh, <laughs> roll me a persuasion check here, Rufus. Oh, God. Come and in. he's oh, in the zone of truth, so you know he's not lying. I am totally honest. At a 12. <sighs> okay. I, I believe that, but I, I do believe that if the wardens were to know, then they would go in there and kill her. I, I trust you. Uh, I can Will, hear everything I'm saying. Will, can yeah. we get... We're, we can walk right up to him, right? They're sure, chained yeah, up, yeah, they're but chained they're up. not in like a cage or anything, right? Sure. Okay, uh, Zephyr was going to walk up, and Macy... Uh, female or male? The, she or he she, has their yeah. hands... She has her hands uh, up above her. Um, he is going to reach up, grab her hand around the wrist. Um, he is going to put his forefinger in her palm and he is going to spell out very slowly writing the letters in common we have 93 of your students so we were sent here <laughs> we were sent here <laughs> to save them we work for esmeralda hmm. it's going to take him about a minute to do all this but as soon as she gets it he's just going to sit there and draw it into her hand tomorrow's weather is sunny <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, this is uh, this is some. You must. At, at what point does she just think that you're you're gingerly petting her hand? <laughs> you're like, yeah, Miguel is <laughs> like. At what point is it? Now, now Miguel's like, you're stealing like, my yeah, thunder. Yeah. Actually, yeah. So Miguel probably makes a distraction unintentionally. Zephyr, I always wondered what was the way to get into your heart, and now I see just a little bit of gentle touch while you were there with these. And he's sort of like looking around. Are the wardens reacting at all to this? Yeah, yeah, for crap. sure. Um, she, she <laughs> she's succeeded on her intelligence check, so she's she's definitely getting some of what you're saying. Maybe not every single word, um, but you know, she's she's picking up on some of what you're saying. You know, the ninety-three and the children, or the kids in particular, uh, and the uh, warden. One of the wardens here says, "Hey, hey, hands off!" <clears throat> oh, just. I'm sure you all had a little fun down here too. Oh. Or maybe you like to watch. We Sometimes are. I, like I don't. Well. Um, we are sworn to celibacy and have no interest in mages, filthy scum. Of scum course, you have are. sworn to celibacy. How's the wife? I, uh, Rufus is going to step up now, and um. Yeah, this, this guy. This guy doesn't like being taunted. He's a you know an arrogant kind of bully type one. He steps I, forward, hands off. Oh wait, but uh. Zephyr, stop touching the captives. He is ignoring the guy completely and waiting to see if Macy understands. Yeah, she, she Jeff- like uh, there's a uh, there's a widening of her eyes, which you know as she's looking at you, you sense to be recognition or her understanding. And in the meantime, Farron will be sort of like going from cell to cell. I mean, like, do you might have possibly have a key? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anybody uh, have a key? Anyone around here have a key? We're looking for a key. I have a key to a, a chest in my, in my in my bedroom. And it's it's not like a master key. It's got nothing in it. To, is it like a janitor or somebody that might have a master key? Do you we, use? We keys? used to have a a, a, a a skeleton key that lets uh-huh. in from everywhere, but the, the students got hold of it and. It was terrible. Uh, oh, okay. 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 So, so I'm gathering no one has... It was a terrible idea. We, we really rethought all of our security detail after we had a key which opened all of the doors, <laughs> including the front <laughs> well, gate. Should have thought it a little bit more, because now you're in the cage. <laughs> there, looking back, I should have kept that key, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um, poor, poor guy's whole life, it just was, uh. Oh. Well, now that we have gingerly petted your palm, um... Uh, uh, yes. I, yes. I see now. Mm-hmm. Do you happen to know a way through the sewers into this tower that you could, you know, let us in on? Uh, you can whisper it here in this man's ear. Zephyr puts his hand, palm, against her fingers, <laughs> and he's still not turning back towards the, uh, the warden, so she can draw into his hand. <laughs> I do. What can I? What can I do to like get this warden off? Yeah, this? The, um, at this point, uh, the warden is like, "Hey, I said no touching." Um, oh. let me let me show you something. Rufus starts to unrobe. Oh my god! Please, <laughs> Rufus no. just starts to take his oh clothes god. off. Oh god! No, uh, please. <laughs> Let and me hit. Oh, is that this kind of party? Like, Miguel Aaron, starts to unroll. Like, this is fine. We would sit here with the blessing of your captain. Oh, Everything yeah. we're doing is exactly what he wants. This it's true. Against regulations, highly, highly irregular. Um, well. Uh, I have this tattoo. It's really quite a piece of art. Let me show it to you. Yes, here, let Aaron, me show you my scars. Um, is this what we're all supposed to. Oh, oh, I have scars. No, you keep your clothes on, Barry. <laughs> Is this like, enough of a distraction? <laughs> yeah, taking her jacket is, off, and this, she's like, "I guess this is what we're doing now." Um, this is a distraction enough. Um, she is going to uh, finger. Ooh, gotta be, gotta be, gotta be careful. Right? She is going to phrasing. She is go. How do I want to end this sentence? You gotta draw. She is going to finger draw uh, on your on your palm or finger right, I guess. Uh, on your palm, um, my chamber. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> gotta be careful again. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah, she's gonna say, <laughs> My chamber, secret entrance. <laughs> didn't get any better. God damn it, Will. <laughs> no, it didn't. Um, who, uh, I'd say it's hot in here, but I don't have no clothes on. Definitely got um, much worse. I apologize to all the children watching. 
<laughs> so now I'm we're excited. naked and we don't have a key. <laughs> I tried um, so hard. I tried so hard. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Zephyr will whisper, Where's your chamber? <laughs> and I'm like, meaning it's not obviously in the master tower because she wouldn't tell us to go there and take her secret passage. <laughs> I'm glad that you're getting into this whole the whole spirit of this, Zephyr. She gives um, you the room number. Okay. Well. <laughs> well, <laughs> now that we have she all gives seen. You the hotel key. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that we've all seen what it is, um, I came here to show you. And Rufus like jiggles a little bit. My God! I didn't get to show off my tattoo. It's really quite a piece of. Well, give us a spin round, no? I have to rethink everything. So yeah, actually, so uh, Miguel does spin round, and you see his tattoo, which is a full a uh, rainbow serpent. That head begins sort of like on his uh, right pectoral wraps over his shoulder, two huge rainbow wings across of his back, goes down underneath of his army, uh, his armor will be like across his butt and then wraps down around his leg, finally ending up on his left foot. Wow. See, that was quite the thing. Butt. Are we looking at Miguel's butt? Is it fair it yeah, uh, not butt. yet, but it's, <laughs> if you don't stop him soon, he'll be happy to show you all 100%. His parent is not stopping him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the guy is like, I swore no if I have died. Uh, 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 oh, my made, goodness, made Jason. Uh, he's oh, definitely distracted. Uh, Zephyr, you, okay. you feel like you have all the information you need. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, a lot of things going on. Did she say that her uh, chamber is somewhere else? Yeah, she is gave it? you the, the, yeah, the, the, the number room. of the, the room so you can from okay, there. Great, great. It's not far from Mutt's room. Oh, okay. Ooh, or, nice. or Mickey's room, right? Mickey's, Mickey's room, yeah. Right. Yeah, Mickey's room. Okay, okay, cool. Great, thank you. Okay. Uh, Zephyr just nods and he says, we'll help as we can. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll, be, we'll be back. Please we'll be make back. your friends put their clothes on. It's only making um, things worse. If you can figure out a way for me to make them do anything, <laughs> please let me know. <laughs> so Farron, yeah, Farron will uh, like walk back, uh, walk over to Zephyr and just like very quietly be like, so you know where to go? I do. Okay. Um, do you want me to make it? <laughs> Take your time. And, yeah. And she, um, she's like, she's like very loudly is like, now we came down here for a key. And somebody better give us something, because we don't have any information. <laughs> That's... I don't know how to get there. None of them have any keys. We've been everything's been taken from us. I'm afraid we can't help you. Yeah, she's like, I, I know. Well, I, I know you don't have a key. I know that as well. I'm doing. I'm... Oh, oh, well, I guess then, Farron, we're just gonna have to put our clothes on and go look for a key somewhere else. Wait, we uh, have to call totally. Darn it. <laughs> I guess you are, yes. Well, we're gonna... The, uh, <sighs> the, the warden who got all <laughs> flustered when Miguel was stripping down and showing his tattoo just kind of gives him a wink and a smile. Celibacy, you know, is uh, an interesting, interesting... Uh, it's amazing how much you can do and still remain celibate and give him oh. another wink. <laughs> You basically just said celibacy is really hot. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> celibacy. Hey, I Miguel, that's absolutely. Um, there's so much you can do with never even touching, I tell you this. R Rufus goes, um, I would, he actually leaves it and goes, I would like to know, uh, is that true? Chastity turns me on. As, as a monk, as a monk, Rufus is like, you don't have to touch nothing. Oh no, my friend! You never do. Let me explain it to you. Oh my God. And Rufus walks up, still naked, clothes in hand, throws his arm around you, and starts to like, walk off. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Farron is still like, "Well, I guess my plan wasn't so good after all." <laughs> like, <laughs> a big show of it. She's like, "I guess I'm just stupid." We're just an. <clears throat> Not everyone can be the sharpest knife in a drawer, my friend. So, yeah, so keep telling me about not touching there, um, Miguel. Maybe back at Mutt's later on, I can show you. Oh, my dear goodness. <laughs> uh, 
I can't tell about ship. My, my, my extra large friend. First, we have things to do. Down to the sores again. What happens on St. Patrick's Day? On St. Patrick's Day. I, uh, Zephyr is outside of any so identifiable so. cone of truth. He is going to bring <laughs> Miguel over and say, um, we don't have to go in the sewer. We have to go back to Mutt's cousin Mickey's room. There, the uh, Macy has her room there. There's a passage to the high tower. Would we not go through the sewer to go up Mutt's hole to get to Mickey's room? Why? I think we don't, what he's trying to say is we don't got to. Yeah, they're allowing us to walk around. I mean, we can, but there were those things down the sewer. Yeah, the other thing gonna... focused around the tower, less so anywhere else on the campus. Right oh, now. okay. I'm sorry. I thought that the, I thought that we had undead people. Like we had the undead frogs, not frogs, monkeys <laughs> in the um, in the court, like all in the courtyard, so we yeah. could get to we you could can, get to Mickey yeah. without you know just without getting attacked. Yeah, you don't have to go in the open either. All of the rooms are connected, so you can probably walk oh, along okay. the wall and get through there. Yeah, <laughs> even better. Yeah. They don't have anybody following us. Like, um, they didn't no. send anybody to follow us. Correct. That is that oh. is true. Can we stop by? Pont, uh, yep. Maximus Pontimus, just to say, we are going to go see what we can find. Can you uh, do a, a frontal assault in about 45 minutes uh, to cause a distraction so we can perhaps try this long shot of finding something? All right, then. I'm putting a lot of faith in you all. Don't let me down. We never let nobody down. Good. That's true. That's I believe that. <laughs> Who's the first I let down is myself. <laughs> We've always done everything to the best of our abilities. That's right. We give 110%. Down? What are you talking about? I'm known for keeping people up all the time. All oh, the time. Um, we're going to go down into this. Uh, boy! I think it's time you all leave now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, okay. you are headed to near Mutt's, uh, near Cousin Mickey's room uh, to get to Macy's place, right? Yes. Oh, you head through. Uh, it doesn't take long. You're back in Cousin Mickey's room. There's no sight of Cousin Mickey in the room. Uh, and Macy's room is, you know, just opposite that. You enter inside. It's unlocked. Uh, and you come across a room which is very, very neat, very delicately laid out. She's got a bed in here. She's got a large, um, like, vanity mirror up. Um, and uh, there are several candles that are lit in here. There are three candles which are lit uh, by the mirror. Um, other than that, there's a few paintings around, but lots of books, lots and lots of books. Um, and in her, like, side cabinet as well, she's got lots of books. Uh, Zephyr will go over to the mirror. You're looking good, Zephyr. I know. Um, <laughs> he will... He's going to touch the surface of the mirror. The surface uh, uh, ripples and uh, kind of like mo like moves your hand into it. Uh, however, you do sense a, a resistance. Um, is there anything different in the reflection than in the room, specifically the candles? The candles are off in the reflection. Mm, nice. Um. I explain that to everyone and let them figure out, the arcane people figure out what needs to be done. Oh, you're assuming any of us have arcane. <laughs> I've seen you do things. I've seen the archer do things. Yes, but arcana... Oh, uh, yeah. I mean... Can we, we just know. can we just go with the, we start blowing out candles, or do you want us to do an arcana check? Uh, you could roll me an arcana check. Oh, damn oh, it. Like everybody? I would roast an 18! Oh Actually, I got a 16 with a plus oh, zero. Oh my god! I did. <laughs> See? You guys I told you y'all could do it. When you don't need good rolls, you guys nail them. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rufus looks into the matrix and sees the lines. And the, and the, the code he took, he took the yeah. blue pill! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the lines of code just runs by, he gets it. Uh, yeah, you're pretty sure that if you could um, make the uh, real life world echo what the reflection is, that you'd be able to enter through. Which would mean, in layman's terms, put out the candles. Well, not <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, um... 
you'll get wax everywhere. See, you do the sexy way. See, this is the part of this whole not pouting. See, I look over, I look suggestively at Rufus and go, let me turn out the lights. He goes, oh, oh, let me try, let me try. And you like, you see his big soldier's fingers, you like, like lick some not sexy at all. Like sticks his giant hiney out and like, <laughs> and he goes, oh, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's the face she made oh, when you did that. I just love that Chelsea is like his hiney. <laughs> I just see this big, like, big old flim lobber on your No, head. yeah, just like, you know. <laughs> we, 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 we will work on that, my friend Rufus. <laughs> You said there was free candles. I could do it again. I could try one more time. <laughs> <laughs> but I've heard that practice makes perfect. <laughs> yes. Yes, my friend. <laughs> you definitely need to work on that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> thank, thank God for I clips. I totally do not snort when I watch. <laughs> that was sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me show you how you snort out the candle. <laughs> okay. Whew. All right. Okay. Then. I'm serious too. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the third candle's out. The third yeah. candle goes out. out. And Zephyr, you <laughs> sense the resistance in the in the mirror, uh, pulling away. It looks like you can just step right through. <sighs> <laughs> well, so uh, we did. Well, we did. Take this? <laughs> <laughs> so do um who's okay who's can i put my hand through it yeah when you when you place your hand through it uh your hand goes through and you can sense that it's like warm on the other side oh it's warm i pull my hand out like uncomfortably warm or like nice cozy warm Uh, nice cozy warm it reminds you of like uh esmeralda's room which had like hot tea and soup in jump through oh oh favorite um, well, if it feels like warm stew and just tea and warm, I'm right behind him. Do I fit through the mirror? Yeah, sure. Okay. You're going sideways. Yeah, 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 like, like, yeah. <clears throat> I guess I follow through. Okay. Farron, let me, I take Farron's hand and, and sort of help her up through the mirror. No, she's like, oh, sir, <laughs> like steps in. Okay. Uh, so you, uh, <laughs> Head through the uh, portal. Um, Miguel checks behind him to see if there's candles on this side that he can light to sort of close the wind, close the door. Yes. Um, <laughs> I gotta say, it, the Karma Rufa is got is got to be a thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hashtag Karma Rufa. Uh, yeah. Can we like kickstart that? <laughs> So uh, you guys uh, jump through and you find yourselves in High Mage Esmeralda's room. Uh, You are uh, in here, it is warm. Uh, You are basically in the kitchen area uh, where the uh, the soup and tea is still on the stove. There are candles here. Uh, They are currently lit. Um, And so if you're going to unlight them, uh, then the portal closes. So it's like a two-way system. Um, You see in here <clears throat> High Mage Esmeralda. She is deep in a trance in the center of the room. All around her, she's like got pentagrams on the floor and she is like casting blue magic down into the ground, which kind of like thrums and hums. Outside, you can hear the chittering of these creatures. <laughs> Uh, as there are, you know, 30, 40 of these zombie monkeys trying to crawl up. Sometimes, you know, they'll try and get too close to the wards on the uh, the tower that Esmeralda has left, and they get kind of like burnt away and, and fizzled into a into a you know a pile of ash. However, outside you also hear this kind of like low hum uh, of, and, and, and crackling of other magic working against the wards, um, and you can sense that you know the 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 pentagrams closest to the door are waning. They are. 
being broken through slowly but surely by someone on the outside. This is the beginning of The Phantom Menace when uh, Qui-Gon Jinn's got his lightsaber <laughs> going through the big one. Yeah. Um, Blast off. So, right. Now there are two of them. Um, I'm done. I'm, yeah, go ahead. I assume that we know enough not to interrupt a ritual casting that takes 24 hours, so... She looks pretty deep in a trance right now, yeah. Yeah. Um, can we... Are there any windows? Can we set out? I want to see if I can f see who this sort of... This leader of there is, whether it's um, you know, Tabaxi. Is it someone from the Zephram that we know? Is it someone new? Um, yeah, run me a perception check. <sighs> Come on, buddy. That's a yeah. four. <laughs> you uh, okay? So here's what happens. Miguel uh, like goes to the uh, the window to look out. It's still very dark outside, and it doesn't seem like there's any real natural light out there to light them. You do see, you know, one of the zombie monkeys like jumps up to the window and it kind of bounces off. Um, and then a blast of black magic just like wings its way right to your window uh, and smashes against the glass. The wards hold it back, uh, but they, they strain once again as someone outside there has just cast something pretty bad at your face. Um, well, that's... You might, yeah, you might want to step away from the window. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, protect, yeah, protect the moneymaker. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, that was below the edge of the window, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, but, um, oh. <laughs> uh, that well, someone is certainly keeping an eye on the tower, uh, and oof, now knows that someone has made it in. That is not good. Do we know um, how far she is from completing the ritual? It's 24 hours. 24 We've already. Hours. It's, we're only at 21 gonna... left. I was gonna say six hours into this, maybe yeah, six hours probably into it. It's not gonna last for eighteen. No, there's no way. No. Uh, we could we could barricade up the door just in case the the you know the wall uh, goes away. There's at least something there, and we're at least here to protect her. But I, I mean, eighteen hours more—that's a long time. Well, she's not gonna make it. We got here's what we've been here. told. Yeah, here's what we've been told. Best case scenario, we have to get ninety-three kids in through these wardens in through the same portal in Macy's room into here in 20 or 18 hours. We can't do it. The other thing we have to worry about is what if Pontimus was right about some of this? What if she's unwillingly opening a gate that lets in something? I was thinking yeah, the same yeah. thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, we don't know who's telling the truth. What if they're both telling the truth? It could be a place to protect her, but it could also be a way to get the bad guys. Yeah, it, uh, well, or something that this person with all of their zombie frogs can go and invade and have a protected place for her to for, to gain their power. We have to interrupt this ritual. We need to get her out of here. Out the out the mirror, down Mutt's hole, through the sores, away from here. Because Pontimus is not going to wait very long, and whoever that is now knows someone's in here. We have and, to wait for Pontimus know. to attack. It, I mean, they already they already know that the, that Avalon is where the mages go, so they're probably already planning some sort of something there, or somebody's planning something, because obviously somebody's not happy with the mages, so I don't think they're lying. It's probably not very safe, especially since they already know that that's where they were going to go, and nobody told anybody that. It, it, just, it, it just seems like not a really good plan. How much time has elapsed, Will? I mean, we said 45 minutes for him before he attacks. How long did it took, take for us to get around here? About and, 15 minutes. Oh, 30 minutes. Oh, now. Lord. Well, um, <clears throat> even better. It gives us a 30-minute head start. Uh, Zephyr will turn to Miguel. What happens when she, we pull her out of this? I do not know. Magic like this is far beyond anything that I know. It's a whole different... It's a whole different world. What's keeping them out? Is it her? No, I point at the I point at the pentagrams. I believe it is those. See, as they attack, they flicker. You can roll me an yeah. arcana check here, uh, Miguel. Can I use the sixteen from before? <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on! Damn it! Yeah, you you're not at all certain that if she breaks her concentration, then the wards stay or go. So it's possible yeah. that when she breaks concentration, the magic around this place goes. Because if you remember correctly, the wards weren't there in place before. Right. Oof. We need to get her out of here. 
And we need to do it quickly. We're not going to have any time. Do we have I to see. get Ster out? Can we, I don't know, trick him into thinking she's gone, but she's not really gone? You can't trick Pontimus. No, nothing for that zone. Even if I made myself look like her. I'm not talking, because it, it's not Pontimus' people that are attacking her right now. It's the, right, Will? Right, it seems right. as though the undead woman uh, is outside with her minions trying to get in. But if we... If we move her out of this, she's like in a circle or something, right, right Will? Right, right. We move her out of the circle, the wards drop, they come po- storming in, and then it's us running for our lives with an army of scorpion monkeys. They're changing name every time I talk about them. <laughs> the scorpion monkeys yeah. right behind us. So, yeah, we've got to somehow, I think it's, yeah, we've got to hold the line for 30 minutes so they are distracted and we get her out of here. Do we even think that, well, we don't have no choice, do we? Do we have a choice, guys? We got to hold out for 30 minutes? Pontimus has to attack. We see how they react to that attack. As yep. soon as there's a distraction, we got to rip her out. Get out of yep. here. What yep. if it and kills her? Not... She said it's a really powerful bits of magic. She's going to die if she stays here. No, what I'm saying is can't we go get... Let us, when the distraction happens, go get us all the mages, break them out, bring them up here, have them cast some illusionary magic bits to hide it all. Just like we did the last time we was here. Then when they get up here, they think she's not here, but she's really here. But we have all of those wardens, the guards who are there, the, the zones of truth, all those chains. Do you uh, think do we can... We, yeah, um... yeah, convincing... Uh... Marcus Potamus to let mages out and cast magic is probably going to be next to impossible, you'd think. He just hates them. And I, we probably wouldn't be able to do it secretively either. I'm sure they have some sort of power thing that they can, like, detect magic or something. I, I doubt yeah. they would be fooled by it. Well, your thing is you're on a clock. You know, it's 15 minutes back yeah. and then 15 minutes there, so... Okay, yeah. also we're happen. on a clock. Yeah. Well, and well, truth... Yeah, I mean, if Zone of Truth, probably he's got, like, a true sight thing going on as well to look through illusions. Well, if we if we about high powered paladins, <laughs> I was gonna say I don't know nothing about magic, so I, I, I'm trusting you on this. I just don't, I don't want to, to you know, die or nothing. But I'll carry her if you get if you break the free of the spell. I'll I'll, 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 I'll carry I can, her. I can heal her. She it could be very draining on her, but I can certainly heal her. I think what we have to do is just hope that these lords hang out and keep protected as long until they attack. Okay. Um, well, so, let's bar- let's barricade the door just to be on the safe side while we wait. Here's a weird question for you, Will. Yeah. Sir, so, first thing, this tower, does it have a backside that is out of the view of the, where all the wardens are? Uh, no, it is backed up against the wall. Okay, so anything, anything that happens to any of these frogs in the courtyard are the <laughs> undead scorpion monkeys yes. <laughs> that are in the courtyard would be in full view of the wardens. Correct. Um, well, here's, okay. Well, it's got 20 minutes now. Yeah, here's what I want to do. If for some reason the wards start to fall, I want to start doing sacred flame, knowing, hoping that it looks as though maybe one of their people jumped the gun and maybe makes the attack go early. Okay. So as if any of these wards start to, because I believe, now I don't know, it says in your sight line, so I don't, and it come, and the actual bolt comes from the sky, so I don't think that it actually has to break through the ward. I don't know, I mean, that's, I mean, that's a know. DM call. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. A, yeah, that's a DM call, whether you'll let me call us down a sacred flame from inside the tower on something outside the tower when there's a ward in between. Your call. Yeah. But that's what Miguel's going to think that he can do. Okay. What um is, well uh, yeah, at, at, uh, I'm gonna poltergeist this stuff. I am going to prepare a like a, a slip knot, a lasso out of the rope uh to drop around Esmeralda and he's gonna tie it to his own waist. And if things go rough, I'm gonna jump through the mirror and drag her through. Alrighty. because um, I am a child of the eighties. Of course. Uh, okay, Rufus will. Rufus is gonna do what Rufus can do, which is move furniture and barricade the door. That way, in case the ward ends early, okay. there's furniture. just stuff in the way. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Farron, what do you want to do? Um, I think uh, she 
will stay, stay there as like a support system sort of to Esmeralda, like if she's going to fall or if she needs to be like snapped out of it, like, or like just stabilized. Uh, I'll, I'll try to do that because like, I don't, if, you know, if somebody busts in, I was thinking about readying an action. So like if somebody busts mm-hmm. in to have an arrow ready, but I don't want to fire on the wardens and turn them against us like right now. Because okay. I think that would be really dangerous. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Uh, so the 20 minutes go by until you're awaiting the uh, action from uh, the wardens and Marcus Pontimus. And sure enough, uh, dead on the half hour, um, like clockwork, you hear the charge of the uh, paladins from outside and a, a roar of battle. And you can look outside and uh, you see leading the charge of this huge warhammer crackling with divine energy. Uh, Marcus Ponymus is, is leading this charge straight towards these creatures um, with the, the rest of the wardens that he's managed to rally around him, those uh, fit enough to fight. Uh, the zombie monkeys immediately like begin to, uh, to turn on them and a, a brawl and a battle erupts. At this point, however, you've been watching You've been watching as the wards have gone fainter and fainter, and like the, the hot coals on them are, are dying. Um, and uh, as this distraction happens, there's one last sort of burst um, of magic from outside uh, to defeat these uh, wards. Um, and presumably, at this point, everyone's actions come in uh, as the door is like shattered open from the wards as they explode, uh, snapping out uh, Esmeralda from her. Uh, stasis uh, and her trance uh, and you see before you this slender woman um, and she's wearing dark robes uh, dark cowl over her head her skin is uh, undead and Esmeralda kind of like shoots her eyes up to look at her and she says Valindra Valindra Shadow Mantle and that's where we're going to wrap up tonight's episode of Learn by Play. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have <sighs> It's all good, guys. Don't worry about it. No big level deal. Two? Just don't, don't worry about it. That don't worry you about were it. Level two? I really hope someone like makes a gif of all of us going... <laughs> 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 oh no, oh yes, oh damn, oh dear. Oh damn. Uh, oh, <laughs> correct, oh, damn. oh damn! Well my friends, that's what we're going to end tonight's episode of Learn by Play. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, please do let us know. And uh, yeah, stick around. Same time next week, every, epi- uh, every episode of Learn by Play airs at 6pm Eastern here on the D&D channel every Saturday. Uh, so be ready for more shenanigans next week. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun today. Thank you guys for this. And thank you again to Wizard of the Coast for giving us this opportunity in like 10 minutes or so. Heroes Graveyard is starting up, so stick around for that show. And of course, if you enjoyed the show, you can come follow us. We're the Encounter Roleplay team, and we stream Dungeons and & Dragons and other role-playing games over on our channel all the time. It's a good time. Come on over. Uh, let's go around the cast and crew. Do we enjoy ourselves? Where can we find our guy? Uh, you- where can we find ourselves, rather, online? Uh, Tour School, let's start with you. I don't know when I've laughed so hard that I've snorted, and I don't think I've snorted on stream ever. But <laughs> wow. I don't know what it was about the <laughs> <laughs> the candle that just, I just don't even. <sighs> you guys, this is the most fun I have all week. Uh, thank you all for tuning in to our shenanigans. Come set sail with us and uh, general shenanigans on the SS, the SS silliness uh, again next week as we uh, do uh, reinventing the realms in such a dark, serious, serious dark way. Um, you can find me all over the internet uh, at Tall Squall pretty much everywhere. If you go to my Twitter, uh, you can find links to all the other fun things that I do, including something that actually is grim and dark, which is the Turn Cloaks podcast. Uh, we have all kinds of uh, twists and turns and dark tunnels that we go running down there. But if you need a relief from that, join us back here on Learn by Play. Uh, it's been a blast. Thanks. Thanks so much, Tool School. Uh, Sydney. That was fun. Um, I got like really tired in the middle, but then I got a coffee and then by the end I was like so ready. Um, yeah, that was a really cool ending. I'm really excited to see where it goes. I'm scared we're all gonna die. I feel like 
we meet this woman everywhere. And she just sucks. Jesus. But anyway. <laughs> um, uh, yes, I'm Sydney. You can find me pretty much everywhere. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, all those things at Sydneyak. I will link uh, my Twitter in the chat, and that's also on uh, my Twitch. You can follow me there, too. Um, and then I'm also the Dungeon Master for Wander Quest podcast. It's a high fantasy D&D uh, super awesome podcast thing. And I also play Ari on Turn Cloaks podcast that Tosca was just talking about. Very dark, very sad. You'll cry, but you'll love it. So come listen to both of those. Great stuff. And Greg. Oh, I had a blast playing with these guys. It's as much fun and, and interacting with chat. Chat's hilarious. The game is fantastic. It's engaging. It's everything you want from a Dungeons and Dragons game. Um, look forward to it every week, like Tall Squall said. It's just just a blast. Uh, Grimjack21502 on the Twitches and the Twitters. Uh, do a lot of Cthulhu. Check out Tomes and Tentacles. It is a actual play Cthulhu 7th edition podcast uh, where all good podcasts are sold. And uh, hey, meet us back here next week and let's see how we get out of this one or if we get out of this one. Either way, it's going to be fun. See you guys. <laughs> Indeed. Tune in next time for uh, Greg's Let's Just Play uh, special episode. Uh, great stuff. And last but not least, Chelsea. Yeah, um, of course, I always have a blast on this show. This cast is awesome. Will is always awesome and deals with our shenanigans in stride. So um, if you like what I throw, you know, my, the amount of modesty I put out into the world, uh, please feel free to check me out online. Um, I'm little underscore red underscore dot everywhere. Um, I do a 5e podcast called North Brain with Quest and I keep all my schedules for all the mini games, including Thursday over on Encounter Roleplay's channel and with uh, another group called Nerd Immersion. So uh, yeah, you can check my schedule on Twitter. I'll drop it in the, the link in the, the chat. Great stuff. Thank you, Chelsea, as always. Amazing job to my cast, a hand please, um, and stick around for the next game, Heroes Graveyard, it's going to be a good time. But until then my friends, try not to draw too many nat ones because we're going to be here laughing when you do. Until next time, bye bye everybody, bye!